Gomez for the suspended Van, der... Van Dijk, Nunez for Gakpo, and Jones comes in for Endo as we are underway. And Aston Villa have made one change from the side that beat Burnley last Sunday, and that is Martinez back in goal. That was a rather heavy touch at the uh, at the back from uh, from Cash. So uh, Martinez for Olsen in goal. So they have Martinez a back three of Consa, Carlos, and Pau Torres. Cash and Dinia, although they are quite flexible, so you look at it now and it looks like it's a back four with Contra at right back, but they will be quite fluid. Camera, Douglas Louise, McGinn, Diaby and Ollie Watkins. And that's the way that they like to play, Leon Osman. Yes, it is. I mean, as you mentioned, the flexibility. I think defensively at times you'll see them as a back four and Amati Cash will be able to push into midfield to help keep the numbers right with regards to Liverpool's midfield and also keep an eye on the runs, the marauding runs down the left flank for Robertson of Liverpool yeah, at times when they need him to be he can quite easily become part of that back five certainly it's uh, an attractive game for an Aston Villa side that has recovered ever so well after that uh, hammering on the opening day at, uh, at Newcastle here is Luis Diaz quickly closed down by Cash actually Diaz gives the ball away to Diaby who runs forward but it's recovered well by, uh, by McAllister and then to, uh, to Sir Boss Light so uh, Gravenberg is a sign from uh, Bayern Munich, the former Ajax player, as Luis Diaz is forward. Flag stays down, now it's raised uh, over on that far side. Free kick then to, uh, to Aston Villa, not on the bench, uh, but they do have Endo, Gakpo, Elliot, Jota, Simikas, Vachetic, Doak and Quanza. And then um, Clement Longley, who was signed from Barcelona on loan, he's on the bench for, uh, for Aston Villa, along with uh, Zaniolo, Duran, Bailey, Dendonka, Kellerman, Chambers and Tielemans but uh, they've recruited well I think really Aston Villa haven't they so far in this uh, in this last transfer window yeah I think they have I mean you know they've identified positions that they wanted to strengthen they've brought in Paul Torres you know Carlos got injured early last season oh caught a mistake at the back there and uh, that was by Paul Torres uh, he made a, a challenge actually uh, it was on Nunez the referee, Simon Hooper, has gone behind for a corner kick. That was a lucky escape for the player we've just been talking about. It was. It was, as you mentioned, Pau Torres, who just took possession deep in his own penalty area and tried to come inside the pressure of Mo Salah and didn't do it quick enough and then tried his best to recover. Did actually recover, but slid into Darwin Nunes' feet. Corner comes in now. It's an outswinger. Falls to Sabosley! Sabosley opens his account in the red shirt of Liverpool inside three minutes half volley left footed always on the rise and Liverpool are off to a flying star 1-0 Dominic Zaposlai yeah brilliant finish he just hung around the edge of the penalty area he didn't get involved in in the middle with the mix with the big guys going for the ball he was just ringing the edge of that penalty area and the delivery in was pretty decent from that right hand side it was an outswinger from Trent Alexander-Arnold and it just went through the entire pack and he picked up the flight of the ball really early allowed the ball to come on to him rather than going to meet the ball lovely half volley great technique with that left foot hits it into the floor it did take a slight deflection on its way in I think to confound the misery from Pau Torres himself but just snuck it inside that far post it was a brilliant finish great start from Liverpool really really sloppy start from Aston Villa struck it so sweetly though didn't he yeah he did he, as I said he allowed the ball to come onto him he didn't go and rush to try and meet it hit it into the floor it shot up off the shins of an Aston Villa defender and into the goal but it was a beautiful strike on that left foot of, of Sir Bosley there was a, a brief VAR check but the game is underway and Liverpool lead by, uh, by a goal to nil he was uh, outstanding here the other week against Bournemouth but he's such a talent, the Hungarian international. He scored six goals for Leipzig last season. He also contributed eight assists. And he's up and running to open his Liverpool account on just his fourth appearance. And all of a sudden, Unai Emery must be thinking, blimey, it's happening again, because he doesn't have the best of records against, uh, against Jurgen Klopp. His only victory against the German was actually for severe in the Europa League final seven years ago well he'll be furious with his team I mean they've started so slow and so sloppy 
as you mentioned Diaz gave the ball away very early in the game to Diaby who had an opportunity to run at the back two centre-halves of Liverpool and he just ambled in possession as Aston Villa have as a team so far McAllister took the ball off him easy then Pau Torres gets caught in possession inside his own penalty area they give a corner kick away and they, they don't defend that properly so they've got themselves to blame for a really poor start and that goal from Savoslai will also maintain the record and there are certain statistics that do catch your eye and this was certainly one of them that Unai Emery has never been involved in a goal or straw now in 80 Premier League games as a manager and I was checking back indeed his only goal or straw uh, was for Arsenal in a Europa League tie against Sporting it's not a, maybe it says something about his approach to be fair because uh, you know last season when he did come and board at Villa Park he did very very well they collected 49 points under him last oh, yeah, season yeah you'd, you'd think it, it sounds good it sounds entertaining but he wants a strong back four and you can't always guarantee that at the top end of the field your strikers and your attacking midfielders are going to be able to unlock the door so you hope that your defensive structure will keep clean sheets but you know they're, they're just at both ends of the field not necessarily reliable and now they're behind early in this game and they've got to go in search of the equaliser well they haven't settled again because that was a, a camera back pass to Martinez that put him under pressure he put it out of play for a throw Liverpool lead by a goal to nil already six minutes play Diaz near side the left pushing the ball back to Curtis Jones part of Lee Carsley's successful side at the Euros in the, uh, in the summer indeed it was Curtis Jones who got the only goal against Spain in the, uh, in the final had the pleasure of speaking to him before they, uh, they went out to uh, Georgia and Romania in the, uh, in the summer very unassuming young man actually who's had not been blessed with good fortune when it comes to, uh, to injuries he had that freak eye injury I recall as well as Salah certainly felt the love ahead of the game plays the ball forward now it's with Saboslai sends over the cross just over the head of Diaz getting a lot of room over on that far side the right weren't they nobody picked up the run of Saboslai what in Liverpool as poor as Aston Villa have started to this game the opposite can be said for Liverpool they're sharp their interchange of positions has been brilliant their passing tempo has been very good just on that occasion Saboslai just drifted half a yard offside Trent Alexander-Arnold picked him out brilliantly but Liverpool look like they're really up for this they're fluid they're trying to create attacks and, and attacking movements time after time and Aston Villa just look like they're there to be beaten they haven't really got out of first gear I've been here many times to Anfield and you know you're going to have to work hard maybe it becomes more difficult when the temperature is what it is but they need to get started soon Aston Villa there's a good commanding header whilst Leon was talking from uh, from Joe Gomez replacing the suspended Van Dijk it might be more than the uh, the one game after that sending off at Newcastle last week for his uh, words to the referee he's been charged with improper conduct by the, uh, the FA so uh, Gomez but it was a good strong header forward Martinez all in green away towards our left weights Watkins drifts out towards that far side the left plays the ball inside Douglas Luiz hooks it forward but Liverpool have got Alexander-Arnold back there and now finds Gomez just outside the D of his own penalty area and he runs forward in the all red of Liverpool plays it to Robertson midway through his own half in front of the main stand Jurgen Klopp with his black baseball cap pointing with his left hand, wanting the ball played early. Robertson, though, just stands on the ball and plays it back inside to, uh, to Gomez and they work it across the back. Let's nip to the other two o'clock kickoff. It's at Selhurst Park. So hail Sahi. Eight minutes played. Crystal Palace nil, Wolves nil. Wolves have started the better on the front foot. Neto with a cross from the left-hand side. Gehi, he sliced it over the top for a corner. It came off his shin. The corner was clear. Crystal Palace nil. Wolves nil. Delayed start to the Italian Grand Prix. That is available on online on the uh, the BBC Sport website and the app for when it does eventually get underway. Here we are at Anfield, BBC Radio 5 Live and BBC Sounds. And Saboslai's early goal gives Liverpool a 1-0 lead. And Liverpool have certainly been the better of the two teams in these opening nine minutes as McAllister plays the ball forward and Salah is after it. Salah now up against Dinia. The former Everton man dives into the challenge, wins it, and then he's barged over by Mo Salah. Jurgen Klopp ahead of the game, saying that Mo Salah completely normal after that uh, that bid was rejected on Friday in a deal that could have been worth up to £150 million. But uh, the message is quite clear, Mo, well, certainly from Liverpool. Mo Salah is going nowhere, and indeed, it is his name that now reverberates around Anfield. The Liverpool supporters certainly showing him what they think about him. 
remember the fifth all-time top goal scorer for this famous club as camera holds off Jones ball played by J uh, Diego Carlos Conza goes back Martinez under pressure from Nunez works it across well out towards that far side Dinius Balterman McGinn lays it off now to Douglas Luiz beating the press effectively Aston Villa at the moment but they're still inside their own half just over 10 minutes played Diaby makes the run on the back of Gomez into the penalty area crosses towards Watkins and it's then a sliding challenge by Saboslai out of play for a throw looked threatening for a time he did it was really good defending Saboslai made sure he got back tracked that run all the way but the first time we've seen anything really from Aston Villa and they took a gamble deep inside their own half played it across and eventually it worked out really well Douglas Luiz picking out Diaby inside that penalty area and as he flashed it across, across Watkins couldn't quite get there and neither could Lucas Dinia Diego Carlos just outside the centre circle in the Liverpool half cash on this near side to right a few yards in from the touchline brilliant sunshine here at, uh, at Anfield concert back with uh, Diego Carlos Pau Torres is to his left he goes with a, a diagonal ball Dini is quite high up on that far side Dini hooks over the cross headed on by McGinn and it was good covering by Robertson the left back tucked in inside the penalty area. Villa have won it back though. Left corner of the area. McGinn with the cross. Cash is forward. And Robertson again. Very, very vigilant defending. Aware of the danger. Heads it out of play for a throw. Twice he did well, Robertson. Yeah, brilliant header at the back stick there because Cash can certainly leap and rise and head the ball in that position. Looked like he was going to be favourite. Matty Cash for Robertson defending it well. But that's where you see the benefits of the system. Aston Villa are playing back four when they're defending but as soon as they're in possession Luca Dini is high and wide on the left Mike Cash is high and wide on the right they really do stretch the play get numbers inside that penalty area and it nearly paid off there it's Cash with a throw in front of the cop on this near side the right partially cleared helped further away by Jones and now maybe there could have been a counter attack but McCallis has tried to hit it early and he's tried to play it out to this near side the left because he had two runners over the halfway line in Diaz and Nunez but he just pulled it a little bit and it went straight out of play for oh, a throw. He had so much space to hit that ball into. Yes, I mean, Martinez was coming out of his penalty area, but the two players you'd want chasing a ball over the top would be Nunes or Diaz. Both of them were in a great position if he'd have just left that ball in a position for them to get after it. But unfortunately for, for him and for Liverpool, can only find the touchline. Here is Watkins on the halfway line. Watkins... In the end, just crowded out by the uh, the red shirts, but Luis Diaz has inadvertently passed the ball to Diaby. Watkins now has it, closed down by Robertson, and easily dispossessed. Luis Diaz hits it early. Nunez is after it. Will he keep the ball in play? No, he won't. He did everything to try and do so, but in the end, one extra bounce took it over the touchline, despite the best efforts of uh, of the Uruguayan again. making his first start of the season. Yeah, again though. Liverpool trying to be so precise with that pass they don't need to be Nunes is so quick you can already see I think it was Carlos who was in pursuit was nervous was worried knew he couldn't keep up with the Uruguayan he was pleased to see it just drift out of play Cash diagonal ball Watkins is forward takes it on the chest well touches it back towards McGinn shows too much though to Alexander Arnold that was a loose ball back towards Allison and Watkins almost with the interception in their penalty box but Allison was quickly out and made the decisive touch away from danger McAllister now for Liverpool just at the edge of the centre circle closed down by Douglas Louise and it ricochets all the way through to Allison. well they've stepped the game up Aston Villa there's no doubt about that they're starting to get closer to Liverpool in midfield starting to pressurise the ball make contact nearly pressurised Alexander Arnold into giving possession away inside We're on the edge of his own penalty area there but thankfully for Liverpool's point of view Allison was alive to it Alexander Arnold, oh, what a delightful ball that was. Crossfield towards Luis Diaz, edge of the area, in towards Salah. Salah looking to try and get it back. He might go it alone, actually, but in the end, he couldn't find his way through Diego Carlos and concert. Header forward from Matic. Diaz takes it on the chest. Liverpool have the ball back midway through the Villa half, leading by a goal to nil the home side. Sorry, were you just about to take a glass of it? <laughs> a swig of water? I didn't do that deliberately. Oh, was he in? Thank you for that. <laughs> I thought, <laughs> with my peripheral vision, I actually just saw that, I thought it was your microphone that you were lifting. I didn't realise that it was a, a bottle of water on such a hot day. 
<laughs> I wouldn't throw you under the bus like that. You know that, don't well, you? Well, I feel like you have done. But we'll move on. Yeah. Did he manage to take it? I didn't, a, no. no okay. I'll, I'll do it in a moment. All right, I'll keep, I'll keep talking if you want to have a little swig now. Here is, uh, is Gomez. The mischievous element of it. They wanted to wait for you to drink and then <laughs> throw you another question, but I decided against it. Liverpool lead 1-0. Sorry, I'm such a child. 15 <laughs> minutes played, five live. Here is uh, Alexander-Arnold to Salah on that far side. By the way, I checked, I was speaking to Steve Crossman earlier about the, the, the Saudi window, and I said that there was a little bit of uh, confusion. There's another ball from Alexander-Arnold to Diaz. He does like those diagonal balls. Diaz inside the penalty area, looks for the shooting opportunity. Blocked by concert because the FIFA website does say the 20th of, of September. But I was, uh, had it clarified that it's the, the Saudi Pro League, it's the 7th of September. Although it makes it's irrelevant really from a Liverpool football club point of view because they are insistent that he's not going anywhere. Anyway, Liverpool have got a corner kick twice there with Alexander Arnold spraying those balls out. It's such an option for them. Beautiful technique from Trent Alexander Arnold. Diaz hugs the wing and he gets one on one with Conzer. It's a definite avenue of attack. Robertson out swinging corner, headed away by Watkins off the thigh of McAllister, lays it back out to the left. Robertson with a cross, it's a hanging ball which is caught by Martinez. Let's go back to Selhurst Park, Sahel Sahi. 15 minutes played in, still Crystal Palace nil, Wolves nil. Uh, Crystal Palace thought they had a penalty, Eze was fouled inside the box, VAR ruled that out, and then Jose Sla with the, with the forward ball from the restart. The Wolves defence was caught napping. Are you found as uh, Edward and his effort was blasted over the top from about eight yards away? Crystal Palace nil, Wolves nil. Diego Carlos has uh, has gone down after that ball was caught by uh, by Martinez. There will be uh, natural concern. There wasn't a challenge really towards him. Diego Carlos, who you might recall in his second appearance for the club last season, had that bad Achilles injury against Everton. Now he's gone down against uh, Liverpool. Meanwhile, incidentally, the Italian Grand Prix, I'm told, will now start at 20 past three. Uh, and that will, of course, be available online on the BBC Sport website. But uh, Diego Carlos at the moment, he's got that rather resigned look as he's just sat down with the physios tending to him. Yeah, and as you mentioned, because... Doesn't seem to be anyone in his vicinity. It does make you wonder how bad the injury is and if he'll be able to continue. They do have defenders on the substitute bench, though. They have Clement Longley. They do have Callum Chambers that could just come in and take that position. Diego Carlos is operating in. They won't want to lose him. No, they certainly haven't been blessed with uh, with good fortune on the injury front already this season and it looks like they're not going to take a chance and it's going to be Clement Longley who's going to be uh, going to be coming on for uh, for Aston Villa he was uh, signed uh, from on loan from uh, from Aston Villa of course he was uh, on loan at Tottenham last season he made 35 appearances and uh, and the one goal so the uh, the French international is going to be coming on and in fact it might well be oh no they're going to change it now Leon Bailey's going to be coming on so i just wonder if they've had a change of heart here. Longley was definitely stripped for action. Longley now is putting back on the uh, the yellow bib and it will be Leon Bailey. So what will happen here is that Cash will go in at right back, Conte will move across and Leon Bailey then will play on the wide right. Yeah, it's an easy for, easy solve for Aston Villa. Matty Cash is you know, a natural right back. He had been playing more of a, a right midfielder. Certainly when, uh, when they were defending. Well, I just felt that Aston Villa was starting to get a grip of this game they were starting to show how their system was going to affect Liverpool they'd started to push Liverpool backwards but managers decided to change it to that natural system with Cash right back in and Bailey will now play off this right side of, uh, of midfield so uh, Longley at the, for the time being has just got his yellow bib he waits he might just have to wait for his Villa debut but the change has been made and Diego Carlos is off and Liam Bailey who scored three in three successive games is, uh, is on and now it's uh, with concert partnering Pau Torres and Cash switching at, uh, at a right back. 19 minutes played. BBC Radio 5 Live. We brought you earlier Rangers nil, Celtic 1 at Ibrox. We've still got Arsenal, Manchester United to come at 4.30. And of course, on Friday, the Rugby Union World Cup starts. All 48 games live on 5 Live Sports Extra, BBC Sounds or the BBC app. And we open up with France against New Zealand from 7 o'clock. And then the following night, Saturday in Marseille, England 
against Argentina. But all 48 games live through BBC Radio and its various sources. 20 minutes played. Liverpool still lead by a goal to nil on a very, very hot afternoon at Anfield. Gomez goes back. Diaby puts him under pressure towards Alisson. Little touch by the keeper for Liverpool and then hits it long. Headed away over on that far side by, uh, by Dinia. Now it's with uh, McAllister, though, for Liverpool. <laughs> Ripple of applause for the appreciation for the, uh, the World Cup winner, Alexis McAllister. Sir Bosley, the goal scorer, plays it behind McAllister. But um, seems quite comfortable for the home team at the moment. Oh, it is. You know, we mentioned that, you know, it's difficult to close down in this weather and, and, and use the energy that's needed because the, the heat does take it out of you. And Aston Villa just seem to be playing in bursts at the moment. And you're right, they've just sat off the pace a little bit, whether that substitution and the reshuffle is just affecting them at the moment. But Liverpool under no pres uh, pressure as they're just popping the ball around at the back into midfield and McAllister who I think the jury's still out where he'll eventually play for Liverpool but he's at the holding role at the moment playing very well another excellent distribution from Alexander Arnold finds Salah Salah cuts it back and there is Nunez but it's all about the vision of Alexander Arnold little bit fortunate how it eventually went in after Nunez, I think, had hit the post initially. Might go down as an own goal. Liverpool, though, are not complaining. They increased their lead. 2-0. Well, it will go down as an own goal. But it deserved, it deserved a Liverpool name on the end of this. It was a brilliant move. As you mentioned, so fluent, so sweet. It came after, what, a stretch of two minutes of possession without any actual pressure from Aston Villa at all. And then... Trent Alexander-Arnold on the halfway line, picks the ball up, and when he does, the Liverpool front three just come alive. They know he has the ability to pick one of them out. It's Salah initially, just spins off the shoulder of Luca Dina. Played brilliantly from Trent Alexander-Arnold, and then he plays it across to Nunes, who's in support. He should finish it, but he strikes the post, and, and it comes back and hits Matty Cash on, on the way in, and he stumbles into the back of his goal mouth. But then the question is whether... Salah was offside in the initial build-up. I think the roar you just heard suggests that he wasn't. Yeah, there was a VAR check, but after that check, the goal stands. It's been awarded and Liverpool lead by two goals to nil. Last week I was commentating at Sheffield United and Cash obviously had scored two goals. And I made a joke about Cash converter. If that was a Cash own goal, then that's a Cash bonus. But really? <laughs> <laughs> not, not for Aston Villa. Not for Aston Villa, but for Liverpool. The Mail actually read, read, uh, led with that headline last week, cash converter. Luis Diaz, Diaz with a cross. I All of a sudden, no, Villa's task has got to... I take it you were proud about that. <laughs> yeah, doesn't take much. 2-0 to, uh, to Liverpool. And Aston Villa, they've lost Diego Carlos, and now they find themselves two goals down. They've not won in their last five visits to Anfield since September 2014. I think what Aston Villa are, are dealing with this year is the high line that they operate with. I mean, they operated with it all of last season and they caught the opposition out so often because strikers would make their runs early or midfielders wouldn't make their runs. This year, teams know what Aston Villa are going to do, so you know you're going to time your runs much better, runners from midfield much better and as you've seen at Newcastle and today so far the good teams are going to punish them Luis Diaz gives the ball away in the Liverpool midfield to McGinn turns, feeds it out towards uh, Dina on that far side Liverpool lead 2-0, BBC Radio 5 Live and BBC Sounds Matip though is far too alert ahead of Watkins and another ball by Alexander-Arnold his distribution, my word, it is eye-catching he's hit four balls now as that free kick goes against Liverpool, Nunez is a judge to a foul. Colts are over on that far side. He's hit four balls. He's spraying it around at will. Yeah, his technique's brilliant. That was the first time we've seen somebody realise they don't need to be as precise. And you're talking about Nunez and the runs he made. You can see the appreciation, or you can hear the appreciation from the Liverpool fans. The ground he made up there on Konza to nearly get the ball and compete eventually giving away a free kick against the Aston Villa man but 
when you've got someone like Trent Alexander-Arnold in possession of the ball and the pace that this front three of Liverpool have got against a high line. We're going to see that pass time and time again. Well, now it's with Douglas Louise, whose crossfield ball picks out Bailey. It was a precise pass as well, but again, alert defending by Robertson. He's certainly on his A game this afternoon as Robertson now plays a ball in field and he's picked out Nunez, lays it off first time to Diaz. Diaz goes down, camera might get a yellow card here. And the French international is indeed shown yellow by referee Simon Hooper. Let's get an update from Selhurst Park. Sahel Sahi. We've played 25 minutes here. Still goalless between Crystal Palace and Wolves. Nelson Semedo's just been booked for Wolves. Crystal Palace are on the attack. Ball flies it towards the far post, headed over by Edward. But Eberiche Eze, Ian, he's been absolutely brilliant. Some forceful running from him. He's causing the Wolves' defence all kinds of problems. Crystal Palace nil, Wolves nil. Cheers, Sahel. Liverpool lead here by two goals to nil in the sunshine. They're attacking the Anfield Road end, so they're playing from right to left as we look it's a few yards up from the left corner of the penalty area Saboslai and Alexander-Arnold are the two players who stand over it Saboslai got the first goal and Matty Cash own goal increased Liverpool's lead two in the wall for Aston Villa Alexander-Arnold square onto this ball but it is he who steps forward right footed Matty placed the header down and the flag stays down as well nobody went with him what a chance that was for Liverpool should be three no surprise of the quality of ball in from Trent Alexander-Arnold. The surprise was that nobody was picking up Matip in the middle of the pitch. And once he had his header and missed the target, he quickly looked in hope. I think the official would put his flag up to let his poor finish off the hook, but he didn't. Concern at the moment is how sloppy Aston Villa are. And they've just given the ball away again to McAllister. McAllister fired it in quite quick, though, to, uh, to Diaz. Villa can't get hold of it. Liverpool again. McAllister, Salah. Curtis Jones touches the ball forward and then the ball laid back by it by Nunez and a nice gentle walking pace with every outfield player in the Villa half it's Gomez inside the centre circle turns and plays it back towards Matip and on the halfway line now has that free man in Curtis Jones Alexander-Arnold although he's at right back is in there that inverted role once again but it's so easy at the minute for Liverpool keeping the ball effortlessly and passing it around at, uh, at will Trent Alexander-Arnold who was actually listed as a midfielder when Gareth Southgate named his England squad for the forthcoming games against Ukraine and, uh, and Scotland Salah was looking to make a run off Dinia so Bosley hangs on to the ball for the time being here is Alexander-Arnold who now finds Salah just over the halfway line on that far side and back with Massey and they've uh, kept the ball here and Villa at the minute in the, uh, in the sunshine are just chasing shadows here is uh, Alexander-Arnold so Bosley the applause is for the, the passage of play from, uh, from Liverpool as Massip runs forward and then just stops, leaves it for Saboslai. Nobody's made the run in behind the Aston Villa defence and as they push up, once again, Leon Osman has talked about this high line. That back four is midway through their own half and there is so much room for Liverpool players to run into when they want to. But at the moment, they're going back towards Alisson, but Liverpool completely controlling. Let's get an update from the, uh, the F1, Harry Benjamin. For several aborted starts, we are back underway here in Monza, lap 4 of 51. Carlos Sainz leads after starting from pole in the Ferrari, but Max Verstappen is now closing on him, just half a second between them. Commentary on the uh, BBC website from the Italian Grand Prix. As uh, This is McAllister, hits it early, little touch by, uh, by Nunez. Sabosley and Salah, their presence alone forces Dinia to head it out of play for, uh, for a throw. On Sports Extra this afternoon, by the way, England against New Zealand in the men's T20 from, uh, from Edgbaston. And then at six, commentary from the US Open live from New York. So lots of live sport as an alternative to the, uh, to the football. Wall-to-wall -wall football this Sunday afternoon. From Ibrox earlier, we brought you Rangers, Snill, Celtic 1. And we've got Arsenal, Manchester United to come at 4.30 here on BBC Radio 5 Live. So boss life for Liverpool, all in red. The Hungarian international plays it out towards that far side. Nunez then slips. Curtis Jones had made the run. The player was offside anyway, Curtis Jones. Martinez gathers that bouncing ball. We've been playing for half an hour and it's all Liverpool. Yeah, it's set off that half an hour. Liverpool probably had 28 minutes of possession. Aston Villa just aren't working hard enough when Liverpool have the ball. It's like they drop off. They allow Liverpool to have possession, but they're also playing a high line. So they're giving Liverpool space to run into without putting pressure on the ball. 
Seems counterintuitive from a defensive point of view. And the opposite can be said of Liverpool. Aston Villa just keep giving the ball away. Liverpool's pressure has been excellent. Salah. He's robbed it off Dinia on that far side. He's helped out by Douglas Luiz. He's Dinia with a game. They can't hold on to it. Gomez high up the pitch, wins it back. And then Curtis Jones is dispossessed by Diaby. Diaby now will run forward for Aston Villa. He's away from Curtis Jones. He's over the halfway line. He releases the ball towards Bailey. Bailey on the inside of Robertson. Away from Curtis Jones. Bailey has done well. Couldn't thread that ball through towards McGinn. And in the end, it was Curtis Jones sliding inside his penalty area that has forced the ball behind for a, a corner kick. That was better for Aston Villa. Yeah, well, it's definitely been tough going for Aston Villa so far, but with the players like Diaby and Bailey on the on the pitch, that they can burst into life. They've got such ability, they can r run with the ball so easily. And the pair of them skip past two Liverpool players each in that move, nearly linked up at the very end inside the Liverpool penalty area, but forced a corner kick. So maybe with those two players on the pitch, they're still in this game. Luca Dina comes across to take the corner kick and because of his Everton connections, 127 appearances in his three and a half years across Stanley Park at Goodison, there are a few boos for the former Evertonian. He takes the corner, it's left-footed, headed away well by Nunez, climbed high, Douglas Luiz midway through the Liverpool half, goes all the way back to Martinez. Actually didn't have a good record in the derby games against Liverpool, Dina, who stayed forward on this right-hand side to head it back towards Diaby. He only had one victory in eight derby games. Matic on the edge of his box, finds Gomez. He plays it up towards Salah. Clips it on the inside to Nunez, who tried to return the ball to Salah and Liverpool have lost it. Conta prods it forward to McGinn, outside the centre circle of the Liverpool half as Aston Villa in their white shirts and sky blue shorts with 13 minutes to go to half-time. Trail by two goals to nil with Douglas Luiz. Forward now. And... Everybody back for uh, for Liverpool. And Douglas Luiz has to stroke it to uh, to concert. And at the minute, they just can't find a, a way through. As again, stepping out of defence was Gomez to Diaz. Liverpool have it with Saboslai. Touches the ball back towards Diaz. Saboslai is going to make a run. Cash all of a sudden doesn't know whether to close down Diaz or go with Saboslai. He does neither. It's played towards Saboslai. Cuts it back. And then it was Pau Torres who strode forward then to clear the ball away for Villa. But Cash was in a conundrum. <laughs> Now Diaby, Diaby away from a slip from Gomez, Diaby runs forward, he's got a runner in McGinn, McGinn with a shot, just couldn't keep it down, left footed, over the top of the crossbar, and it will be a goal kick and Liverpool still lead by two goals to nil. Yeah, they should have done more there, Aston Villa, they should be running back to the halfway line to kick off with the game 2-1, Liverpool just got caught out, you mentioned nearly creating an opportunity at that end of the pitch, just left themselves exposed, and again, Diaby at the heart of it, driving at Liverpool, Pass Matip, sucks in Trent Alexander-Arnold, leaves the ball for a McGinn shot, 12 yards out on the angle, and he puts it over the top. Another high ball forward by Alexander-Arnold, he's found Nunez, tried to backheel it into the penalty area for Salah. Pau Torres will run it away for Villa, but Alexander-Arnold read that, steps forward, wins it back. Here is Alexander-Arnold with a cutback, Nunez strikes concert. It looked goal-bound too, as Liverpool look to try and find another goal as they lead. 2-0 here at, uh, at Anfield. It's actually the first time this season that Aston Villa haven't scored in the opening 20 minutes. They've done so in all five games previously. Would you be encouraged with the last couple of attacks that Villa have had if you were a Villa supporter, Leon? Um, I think it shows me that the team can create things in the game, but I think you'd be more concerned that they'll be three or four down by the time they actually get there goal in this game they've just been so off the pace Aston Villa they're rolling passes into people's feet nobody's coming to the ball Liverpool are stepping past time and time again as you mentioned Trent stepping in front Matip stepping in front of Watkins Watkins hasn't really been involved in this game as yet Bright Sparks been Diaby Liverpool on the other hand have looked bright they've looked imaginative Darwin Nunes should have been on the score sheet once. Was very unlucky there with this finish. He just seems one of those unfortunate strikers because he hit that beautifully. Then that attempt at goal and concert didn't know a thing about it when it hit him in the face, but it stopped and got a third goal. That's the voice of the former England international Leon Osman who is with us as Liverpool lead Aston Villa by two goals to nil. McGinn midway through his own half. Dinia tries to combine with uh, with Watkins. The return ball to Dinia is lifted back to the England international. Tried to feint. Header, a deft touch to head it into the path of, uh, of Diaby. But Liverpool see it back to, uh, to Alisson. And there is uh, McAllister now 
McAllister, just in front of that back four, plays it to Matty. All the time in the world to control it. Back to, uh, to Gomez. And we've got ten minutes to go to half-time. And hardly a cloud in the sky here at uh, on Merseyside. Liverpool lead 2-0. Gomez. Alexander-Arnold. He hasn't hit one bad ball yet, Alexander-Arnold, has he? Well, we don't actually expect him to, do you? I mean, his, his quality is, is such that I think it's more of a surprise when he's having a poor game and when he doesn't pick his, his pass out. And today, he looks like he's thriving where in the armband for Liverpool. Looks like he wants to be at the heart of, of every positive move that Liverpool make. Ball is hit forward by, uh, by McAllister. Uh, it's actually captaining Liverpool for the first time in the uh, in the Premier League as well today, Alexander-Arnold. He previously captained them against Micheland in December 2020. But in the absence of, uh, of Van Dijk, first time that he's led Liverpool out here at, uh, at Anfield. And he's having such a fine game too. Nine minutes to go to the break. Here is uh, McAllister. Once again, he finds that inverted roll, ball over the top. Again, he had the willing runners with Nunez through the, uh, the middle or Salah making the run through the inside right channel. And when he drops into that area, he just gives Liverpool another dimension. He does. I mean, McAllister could play that pass as well. I mean, no Salah went initially for a pass off McAllister. But as soon as Trent Alexander-Arnold gets the ball, every one of them comes alive, every one of them makes a move. McAllister wins it back. Villa just can't really retain the ball very, very well. Jones forward ball towards Salah. Concert gets that a step forward and finds Douglas Louise. And now with McGinn, midway through his own half, back towards Pau Torres. He'll have, of course, been a part of that Villarreal side that was uh, managed by Unai Emery. What they, uh, they lost to Liverpool in the semi-finals in 2022. Just a little touch inside by Robertson, fed forward by McAllister. Villa, though, have it with Douglas Louise, 10 yards inside the Liverpool half, out towards Watkins on this near side, the right. Little touch by Cash, the Polish international, and then played back by Camera to Douglas Louise, who will open it up and spread it out far wide to the left. Do you need to come forward? Hits it first time. McGinn lets it run through, and both Watkins and Diaby were there, and that was the best opportunity that Villa have created, but neither Watkins or Diaby met it really with any meaningful contact, and that chance really did peter out. Oh, they just got in each other's way. It's the first time in the last 20 minutes where Aston Villa have kept the ball for more than 30 seconds, and in doing so, they got past that Liverpool press, switched the ball. Luca Dean just slides it through to the middle. Suddenly, Aston Villa have an overload inside the penalty area. As you mentioned, I think it was, it might have been Leon Bailey who came inside and just got in the way of Ollie Watkins, just got across his eye line. Watkins didn't end up having a shot. It hit him more than anything from probably about seven or eight yards out, centre of goal, and that is a huge let-off for Liverpool. Ball played forward. Nunez with his pace, he's after it. He's got Salah up with him. Salah to Nunez. The angle is tight. He hits the crossbar. The rebound headed away. Only as far as Jones. Jones still there. They appeal for handball. Jones plays it back towards McAllister outside the area. Forward ball to Alexander-Arnold. Goal kick awarded. Now we'll see if there is a VAR check. But Nunez, from the tightest of angles, close to yet another Liverpool goal. I always feel like you're saying, oh, how unlucky when you're talking about Darwin Nunez. And that just shows Aston Villa tried to play Mo Salah off on the halfway line, tried to play him offside, but they don't allow for... Think about Nunez running from five yards deeper. He gets in so easily. Quick link up with Mo Salah, beautiful bit of play. And Nunez just trying to dink the goalkeeper on an angle and just can't get it up and down in time. Hits the crossbar and he had the potential... And ball as Cash tried to, to clear the ball, but it's just so easy for Liverpool to get out in behind that Aston Villa defence. Been a difficult half, really, for uh, for Aston Villa. 39 minutes played. An update from Selhurst Park. Sahel Sahi. Yeah, seven minutes to play here to the half time, Ian. Crystal Palace nil, Wolves nil. Wolves getting back into the game. We've just got a break at the moment. Uh, Edward is down, players taking on Liquid, but both sides lacking that little bit of magic, little bit of guard in and around the penalty box. Crystal Palace nil, Wolves nil. This is a stat courtesy of uh, Opta Joe. Trent Alexander Arnold is the third player to assist 10 or more goals in the Premier League in 2023 after Trossard and Salah, and it's the third time he's assisted 10 league goals in a calendar year. He uh, certainly can't complain about the service from Alexander Arnold, that is for sure. Five minutes to go to half time. BBC Radio 5 Live, Liverpool leading by two goals to nil, and 
such as being their dominance, they could have had more, Leon Osman. They could. Aston Villa will point to the fact that they potentially could and should certainly have scored as well. But as you mentioned, Liverpool could be four goals to the good at this point. They've been fluent. They've been precise with their pass. Their tempo's been very good. They've enjoyed knocking the ball around. And that high line of Aston Villa has given them ample opportunity to get in behind it and create opportunities. And Jürgen Klopp will be pleased with this first half performance, no doubt. But he may tell his team they should have scored more. Five minutes to go to half-time. Robertson off the chest. Referee's blown his whistle. It's uh, offside against Robertson and it will be a free kick to, uh, to Aston Villa. And uh, Liverpool maintaining where they... Well, they're carrying on where they left off from last season, really. They're uh, coming into this game unbeaten in 14 in the Premier League. Last defeat at the start of April against Manchester City. The win today would take them level on points with Tottenham Hotspur and West Ham United and just two points behind the leaders. Manchester City, the only side, of course, with a 100% winning start to the new campaign. As Cash hits the ball over the top, Bailey makes the run. Gomez, though, goes with him, hooks it in field. McAllister will get there first. Alexander-Arnold tucked in field once more, central position. He finds Curtis Jones. Jones now towards Diaz. Diaz one-on-one -on -one against Cash, who backpedals. And now it's with Diaz inside. Sabosli touches the ball, turns with his back to goal, pulls it back. Alexander-Arnold, first-time shot, right-footed, drags it wide, goal kick. Liverpool, though, playing some very good football, leading 2-0. Well, that's his worst strike of the ball of today. That, As the ball came back to him, he just thought it's all set up to him to have a wonderful striker goal, probably 25, 27 yards out, but actually scuffs it, pulls it to the left-hand side of that goal frame. But as you said, it's just, just too easy for Liverpool. And like you're repeating yourself that Aston Villa aren't seemingly working hard enough when Liverpool have the ball and Liverpool are precise in possession, thoroughly enjoying their first half. This is the second of three commentaries. In the first at half-time, we'll bring you the reaction to Rangers nil, Celtic 1 where Celtic go to the top of the table at the Scottish Premiership. That'll come up at half-time for you. 4.30, we're at the uh, Arsenal-Manchester United match. Here is Watkins for Aston Villa, just outside the D, to Diaby. Diaby enters the penalty area, off his left foot, tries to place it, and places it just wide. He's always a danger when he gets it onto that trusty left foot of his, but it dropped wide and it'll be a goal kick. And we've got two minutes to go to the break and Liverpool still lead 2-0. Well, he's been the bright spark, no doubt about it, from, from Aston Villa. But just as they Liverpool played the ball into midfield, there just a bit of pressure from John McGinn, just snuck on the shoulder of, of Sir Bosley, just nicked the ball off him. Suddenly, Aston Villa in good position to have an attempt on goal. Unfortunate that Diaby just missed the target. Sir Bosley running forward towards Salah. He was caught by Dinia. And that'll be a free kick. Simon Hooper will just award that without taking any action against the, uh, the former Everton player. About six yards inside the Villa half. Liverpool take the throw. And uh, Sir Bosley and Alexander-Arnold just uh, exchange a few passes between each other as uh, at a nice gentle walking pace here in the heat at Anfield. Curtis Jones. Now with, uh, with Robertson. Gomez. The only thing you'd say about Aston Villa is that under Unai Emery they do tend to find the back of the net in games. They've failed to score only two of their last 28 games in the uh, in the Premier League. They have had a, a couple of opportunities in the last 10 minutes or so. Certainly that one from Dinius Cross, you'd have thought whether it be Watkins or Bailey, one of them should have got on the end of it. Here meanwhile is, uh, is Luis Diaz. But this is where Liverpool can you can almost get drawn into a, a false sense of security. They lull you in because they're keeping the ball at the back. It's very easy, Ozzy. They're not really going anywhere. Then all of a sudden, with that high line, they can play that ball over the top and they can be in on goal. Well, that's the difference. You think about the Liverpool game against Newcastle last week where Liverpool just sat in the possession. Newcastle didn't do an awful lot to try and create something. But that's the difference for this Liverpool team. Liverpool are keeping the ball and then suddenly... There's a burst into action. There's a, a real desire to go and get a goal. And it's really caught Aston Villa out. Aston Villa are trying to hang in there at times and then seem surprised when Liverpool play that very obvious ball over the top of the defence. In fact, on this occasion, whilst Leon was talking, Sabosla played it down the sides on the right and looked for Nunez to make the run out towards that right-hand side. 
We're inside the last 30 seconds of stoppage time. Liverpool lead 2-0. It's with McAllister coming forward in the centre circle. He accelerates, gets away from a couple of challenges, then loses the ball from Camera. Douglas Louise carries it forward now for Villa. And Camera looking towards the run of Diaby. Diaby, left-hand side of the penalty area, slips. And that allows Gomez to clear for Liverpool. And Jurgen Klopp applauds, as do the Liverpool supporters inside Anfield. Although he, uh, he benefited from the, uh, the slip, I think it's hard to tell, actually, the, uh, the electronic digits. Four minutes of uh, just down to the, uh, to the brightness. Hard to detect the, uh, the four on the, uh, the electronic scoreboard down below from the, uh, the fourth official, who is uh, Tony Harrington. But thank you. thankfully the, uh, the PA announcer confirmed that it was the four which we're now into as a cross comes in from Dinia and that's right down the throat of Allison in the Liverpool goal in front of the cop in the shadows of the uh, of the cop on this gorgeous afternoon on BBC Radio 5 Live Gomez plays it to uh, to McAllister McAllister Curtis Jones it's like a training game they're just stroking the ball around Liverpool no pressure from from Villa sometimes you get a team that will go up and try and pressure quite high Villa have dropped off and Liverpool can play it around at will at the back. Well, that's where the surprise has been, as you, as you mentioned, that Aston Villa have come here and played with a high line, but without any pressure. You know, usually you either drop away and there's no pressure or you play high line and you put pressure on the ball. And at the moment, Liverpool are just knocking the ball around at will with just the, the ease. Diaz did well. The referee played a good advantage there. He was having his shirt pulled all over the place by, uh, by Cash as McAllister... That in the game flow, referee Simon Hooper. Here is Alexander Arnold again in the in the centre circle. Gets it back once more, and Alexander Arnold all the time. Instead, he plays it towards Robertson. He's got Curtis Jones, who's now on the ball here on this left hand side towards McAllister. McAllister to Gomez, left of the centre circle on the halfway line. Now to Matip. And again, because he's in a central area at the minute, the only player out wide at the moment is Nunez, actually, who's now coming forward in off that right touch line. His diagonal ball is cleared by Pau Torres, who plays it out towards Watkins, who drifted out towards the left in that gap vacated by Alexander-Arnold. But there is Matip to cover. And if there is an out, out ball for Aston Villa, they can't hold on to it. It's going to just keep coming back. Yeah, the balance has been good from Liverpool today. As you mentioned, Joel Matip just drifts out to a wider position to allow Trent to come back into the middle so and Ollie Watkins is trying to bend his run into that area Joel Matip is already using that space and Aston Villa just haven't found a clear way to build attacks to get out they've been very very sporadic with anything that they've they've made through the middle but it's always included Diaby he's been the bright spark for them today in this first half Alexander Arnold another delightful ball he releases Salah Salah shoots it's spilled by the goalkeeper cleared away by Pau Torres only as far as Curtis Jones who wins that challenge against Camera and Liverpool win the ball back and once again another ball over the top by Alexander Arnold a faultless display by the Liverpool captain in this first half Liverpool lead by two goals to nil here now is, uh, is Massip over the, uh, the halfway line. And we have entered the last 60 seconds of the four minutes of added on time. Do Liverpool have time for a third goal? And making it look so easy at the moment as uh, the ball is played out towards Robertson. Robertson inside to, uh, to Curtis Jones. He's uh, Curtis Jones, who's missed the last two with, a, with an ankle injury. Back in the side, one of three changes made by Jurgen Klopp. They play it back towards Allison. Watkins will race towards the Liverpool keeper. Back towards Allison, plays it out towards Curtis Jones. And then plays it on the inside to Gomez. Outside the D, he collects it. And again, Alexander Arnold wasn't in the right back role because he's here, playing on the left hand side. And he's looked to try and feed a ball forward towards Diaz. Gomez looked towards him and then he realised he wasn't there and he's playing as a midfielder, essentially. A roaming midfielder at that. He's not just off that right-hand side of midfield. He's been terrific, as have Liverpool in this first half. Yeah, they have been terrific and they lead by two goals to nil and they scored with a lovely sweet strike from Sabos a half volley after three minutes. 
and then Alexander Arnold will release Salah. Nunez hit the post, and the rebound went in off uh, off Cash. Matip's had a free header since. Nunez has uh, had a chip against the crossbar, and Villa have had a couple of opportunities in the last seven minutes of that first half. But by and large, it is Liverpool who've bossed it. And at half time at Anfield, it's Liverpool two, Aston Villa nil. Leon, I'll come back to you in a second, but the half-time whistle's just gone at Selhurst Park. So hail Sahi. Yeah, Crystal Palace nil, Wolves nil. Steve, lively first half. Wolves started brighter, but once Eze got involved, he caused a headache for the Wolves' defence on more than one occasion. He was tripped in the penalty area. VAR checked, but no penalty. From the restart, Jose Sarr, the Wolves goalkeeper, he gave the ball away. Jordan Ayew's shot was cleared off the line, which fell to Edward, who lashed over from eight yards out. It's only goals we lack. Half-time, Crystal Palace nil, Wolves nil. Leon, Alexander-Arnold's had a, a brilliant first half. I'm just watching the Villa players. You get a little camera inside the tunnel at Anfield. Shoulders absolutely hunched as they head for the dressing room. They've been miles off it, haven't they? They have. I mean, you're, you're right by saying Trent Alexander-Arnold has had a terrific game. But if you think about what makes him good, then Astro Villa have contributed to that hugely. They've not put any pressure on him when he's in possession of the ball and they've given him loads of space to, to drop his passes in and, and get runners for him to, to create opportunities. So Aston Villa uh, seem a dream for, for Trent Alexander-Arnold to play against, as have for the whole of the team for this Liverpool side. They've been very good in possession. They've been not put under pressure when they're in possession either by Aston Villa. So but very easy for them to create opportunities. Aston Villa have had a couple of moments, not enough for me, they've not contributed enough for me in that first half, but when they get the RB in possession in the final third, he can create things, he can make things happen. So they'll still feel that there's something in this game for them, but they're going to have to really raise their levels from what's been a very dominant first half display from Liverpool. Thank you very much for the time being, guys. Liverpool 2, Aston Villa nil. second half commentary on the way. Then we'll be off to the Emirates for Arsenal versus Manchester United. We'll make our first trip of the day there shortly. We've got reaction from Brendan Rodgers to come as well after Celtic beat Rangers in the Old Firm derby. Uh, we'll also be at the F1 in Monza, which you can listen to on the BBC Sport website, and England versus New Zealand in that third T20 game, which right now is on five sports extra all of that to come after the news with Stuart Clarkson listen on BBC sounds this is BBC radio five live Steve thank you the Chancellor Jeremy Hunt says the government will spend what it takes to make sure children can attend schools in England safely after concerns about crumbling concrete more than 100 schools were told to close buildings last week following new guidance Labour says the government needs to come clean about the true scale of the problem the Home Office has recorded the highest number of small boat crossings in the channel so far this year 872 people made the journey yesterday on 15 vessels. Almost 21,000 migrants have crossed this year. Ukraine says its troops have breached the first line of Russian defences near the southern city of Zaporizhia. The general in charge of the operation says his forces have spent weeks painstakingly clearing mines at night to enable them to advance. Tens of thousands of festival goers are stranded at Burning Man in the US after heavy rain turned the site in the Nevada desert to mud. One person's died during the bad weather, but police haven't given more details. It's thought people could be stuck for days with roads in the area closed and more rain forecast. Ashley Smith managed to escape on foot. Me and five friends, we need to get to work tomorrow. So we just packed up all our things, put on some boots. Some of us put on plastic bags around our boots and just got walking about six miles to the nearest road. And then um, from there, it was another 10 miles or so to, to the nearest town. A global search has begun for the bass guitar used by Sir Paul McCartney in his first performances with the Beatles. Sir Paul's enlisted the instrument's German manufacturer Hofner to help. He bought it for £30 in 1961, but it went missing several years later. One of the biggest art thefts in Scottish history. In 2003, the Madonna of the Armwinder by Leonardo da Vinci was stolen. They obviously knew what they wanted and, you know, took the painting and then it went quiet. An investigation to reveal the truth. It's crazy, you know, this doesn't even happen in movies. He got greedy. He was trying to do deals for himself. Including previously unheard recordings of those involved. I will do what you instruct in a letter. The Missing Madonna. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is Five Live Sports with Steve Crossman. On Five Live, listen on BBC Sounds. 
It is a cracking day of live sport with beautiful weather up and down the UK as well. We'll be back to the sunshine at Anfield shortly. Liverpool 2, Aston Villa nil. second half commentary on the way. Then we'll be off to the Emirates for Arsenal versus Manchester United. That's where we find correspondent John Murray yes, for one of the big you're ones, John. You're absolutely right, Steve. It is warm here. It's actually warmer than it was in Brighton yesterday. So um, I have to say, even though it's a 4.30 kickoff, I think we have to consider that the the temperature oh, will really? be a factor. Any today. words on a drinks break? Or? Well, uh, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? We'll, we'll see. But it is hot. Um, it, if we might see... Uh, we might see a debut for Amrabat that Manchester United have signed. Now, in the heat of Qatar, he ran 50 miles in the tournament, more than anybody else. I don't know if we'll see him in the starting eleven, but no. we're certainly going to see a few new faces. Well, I, I mean, I've been I've been told that he won't be. That's, right. That's what I've been told today, but that he but he will very much be a part of the plans. Uh, you know, as is very clear from Eric Ten Hag knowing him and bringing him in. So I think uh, Manchester United fans can look forward to seeing him, but from what I've been told today, he won't be involved. But I, the one I'm, in, I'm interested to see if he is involved is Rasmus Hoyland, yes. whether he's going to be involved today. And this is sort of, you know, because it was it was such a big signing for Manchester United to bring this, this young man in with the expectation of scoring goals, only 20 years old, but, but uh, you know, a, another young player of great, great promise. Um, but obviously has had this back injury, so therefore has been out of the limelight, <laughs> out of the limelight for us. But I imagine for him, the pressure is growing all of the time because of the fact that it's been an issue with Manchester United scoring goals from the centre forward position. They desperately need the kind of boost that a, a new signing scoring on their debut could create. Yeah, but over the years, um, you know, quite a number of players have come to Manchester United as a centre forward with a, a big or growing reputation and, and to come into this club. And I, I, I do genuinely wonder whether it's been the best for him to have had to sit and watch and take it all in because you can't, in the, in the world in which we live, and I think it's probably been the case to a certain extent or another forever, you know, whoever has been signed for Manchester United, mm. you cannot avoid that pressure and expectation that you will get from the millions and millions of supporters of this club, not only in this country, but all around the world. And that's where the mentality comes in. And I, I remind you again, he is only 20 years old. Sort of tells the story of, of these two teams at the minute, doesn't it? There are questions about Manchester United and lots of them, but we know exactly what Arsenal are going to do and we almost know exactly who's going to do well, it. Kind of, although um, Thomas Partey's got a groin injury, mm -hmm. so the, the feeling is that, that he's going to be out for a few weeks now. So that's obviously going to alter the, the way that Mikel Arteta's been approaching things this season. I think it's a little bit like the game I was at yesterday, the Brighton-Newcastle match, in that... I'm not sure whether we're going to see a performance from one team, both teams, neither team. Um, and, and even at this early stage of the season, it does feel it's really important for, for both of them, if they can, whoever it is, to come out with a victory. We'll let you get back into the air con, John. Stay hydrated, don't, won't don't you? I like, don't like air conditioning, Steve. I think I've told you that before. Oh, that's true, no, yeah. Don't trust that. Plays havoc with the voice. All right, we'll it just st stay hydrated, won't you? I will. Yes, OK, I'll good to know. That. Thank you. That's our correspondent, John Murray. He'll be with Matt up some full commentary of Arsenal versus Manchester United at half past four in Rugby Super League. Wakefield Trinity hosts St. Helens, St. Helens at three. Matt Newsom's at Bellevue. Yeah, this is a massive game at uh, both ends of the table. St Helens, given the defeat for Catalan and Wigan's win, uh, can go level with those two at the top of the Super League table. Wakefield are desperate for points at the bottom. Castleford's defeat yesterday means that if they win by a particular margin, well, they will jump off the bottom of the table and Cass will replace them. So much up for grabs here. It should be a good one. It's a sweltering conditions. It's Wakefield against St Helens. We also will have the final 32 minutes of Lee Leopards and Huddersfield Giants. They resume today. The match was abandoned on Friday because of a floodlight failure. The score was 16-12. That one also gets underway in two minutes' time. Uh, we're well underway after a couple of false starts in the Italian Grand Prix at Monza. Harry Benjamin. Lap 24, make that 25 of 51. And Verstappen is just about to retake the lead. He removes Lewis Hamilton, who is yet to stop. But the dream is over uh, for Ferrari. Sainz wasn't able to keep Verstappen behind. Uh, and eventually, the Dutchman got through and now leads this race. The two Ferraris still doing battle, though, for podium positions. That's on the BBC Sport website on Five Sports Extra, the third T20 between England and New Zealand's men at Edgebaston. Adam Mountford. New Zealand 48 for one in the seventh. Devon Conway run out for nine 
going for a third, defeated by a good throw from the boundary from Moen Alley. But Finn Allen is looking dangerous on 32. Two changes for England. Jordan and Luke Wood in for Sam Curran and Bryden Carson. New Zealand also make two bowling changes. Jameson and Matt Henry in for Milne and Ferguson. Both sides wearing black armbands in memory of Zimbabwe's record wicket-taker Heath Streak, who's died at the age of 49. He was also captain here at Warwickshire for a season. 49 for one is the New Zealand score in the seventh over, Steve. Thank you very much, Adam. You can also watch that on BBC One. It's the final day of the Walker Cup today. The top amateur golfers of Great Britain and Ireland against America at correspondent Ian Carter's at St Andrews. Well, Great Britain and Ireland were always the big underdogs for this one, but they only need five points from the ten singles to ensure victory. They lead eight and a half, seven and a half. It's the Americans with the initiative, though. They won the foursomes this morning, three points to one. They're ahead in four of the matches, all ten on the course now. Five are all square. Great Britain and Ireland only up in one match, and that is the penultimate match. Liam Nolan of Ireland won up through the first hole against Ireland. Austin Greaser. Some very, very tense golf being played in blustery sunshine on the Five Coast. Earlier today, Celtic came out on top of Rangers in the Old Firm derby. They won 1-0 thanks to a goal from Kyogo Furuhashi. Celtic boss Brendan Rodgers has been speaking to BBC Scotland. Brendan, can I ask you to put into words the sense of achievement from what is a, a, a massive result for you? Yeah, it's a massive result for the, for, for the squad. You know, you consider virtually half the team not available and so for the players to come here and I said before the game to them, listen, I need my men today. You need to come here with 50 odd thousand men for blood. You need to come and, and play like a man, even though you're really young players. And they did that the first, I thought first half, played with great composure, got through the pitch really well, looked after the ball, uh, had chances to score before we did. Probably just needed to clean up in the final third of the pitch and, and stay on it a little bit longer in the final third. Uh, so, uh, but we forced one or two passes when, but we didn't need to. But, um, but we get the goal at the end of the first half. Um, again, doing the dirty work. You know, you got to win, and no matter how much you want to play football, you have to be able to to win the second balls. So the guys did that. Matt wins it, and then it's uh, it's a great finish by Kyogo. That's Brendan Rodgers. Rangers boss Michael Beale isn't happy with VAR after Kamar Roof's goal was disallowed for a foul in the build-up. Today I thought the performance merited more in the game. I thought we started the game quite well. Obviously we score an offside goal and then the VAR call. I think having looked at it back, he kicked Cyril. Cyril's foot's on the floor and the boy kicked Cyril. So I think it's a harsh call. Certainly when the ref goes and looks at it, I think that's one that's gone against us there. Having said that, after that, it's a lot of time to play in the game. I thought we looked dangerous. The goal is an error on our part, a huge error. Everyone can see that. And second half, we pushed and pushed. We had two or three good moments, but for the amount of possession we had, you'd, you'd like us to be a little bit more inventive and also to be a little bit more ruthless because the chances were there. And uh, it's a desperately uh, disappointing day for everybody. Two other games just getting underway. It's Aberdeen nil, Hibs nil. Motherwell have not lost a Scottish Premiership game since April. How will they fare at a heart side dumped out of Europe in midweek? Kenny Crawford. Really interesting one this, Steve. Bathed, bathed in sunshine here at Tynecastle Stadium. Hearts trying to kickstart their season after three straight defeats in all competitions and a European exit. Motherwell hoping to get the away win that would put them in the top of the table with Celtic on 10 points. Um, Stuart Kettlewell has been in charge uh, Motherwell since February played 22 and only lost three times in that um, uh, tenure so far so uh, good for him at the moment it's just kicked off two minutes gone thank you very much Kenny reminder of the choice of listening that you've got right now on 5 Live 5 Sports Extra and the BBC Sport website go to the website if you want the Italian Grand Prix from Monza uh, they're on lap 28 Max Verstappen is leading go over to 5 Sports Extra if you want the cricket New Zealand 57 for 1 uh, in their innings it's the first innings of that third T20 against New Zealand here on 5 Live the football so we'll keep you up to date with Crystal Palace against Wolves that's nil nil at half time we've got full commentary on the way of Arsenal Manchester United at 4 30. Before that, the second half from Anfield with Leon Osman and Ian Dennis. Thanks, Steve. Well, Jurgen Klopp has been sat down there for a good two or three minutes before the Liverpool players have even come out. Now Trent Alexander-Arnold, as Liverpool captain, leads out the Liverpool players, leading 2-0. And I think, Leon Osman, that just underlines how relaxed he is at this stage without being complacent, bearing in mind his team leading 2-0 at the break and they had 70% possession in that first half. 
Yeah, completely dominant display by his team. His tactics have worked. The players are playing well. They're moving the ball quickly. And uh, he'll have basically just gone in and said more of the same. I mean, even although he scored the two goals in, in the last game, he probably may have played anyway. But the pace of Darwin Nunes instead of Gakpo, we may drop a bit deeper. That tactical change has worked brilliantly against a very high Aston Villa defence. So, more of the same. He'll try and be aware of any changes Aston Villa may make to try and get back into the game, whether that be personnel or, or tactical. But uh, it couldn't have gone much better for him and his team. Well, Liverpool haven't made any changes, so Alisson is in goal. Alexander-Arnold, Gomez, Matip and Robertson are the back four, although, as we've been saying in that first half, for a lot of the time, Alexander-Arnold has been playing in that uh, that hybrid midfield role. Saboslai, McAllister and Jones, Salah, Nunez and Diaz. Saboslai and a cash-own goal give Liverpool the 2-0 lead as they get their second half underway, all in red, playing from left to right, attacking the cop end against an Aston Villa side in their white shirts and sky blue shorts who made the change in the uh, in the first half with Diego Carlos, who was that offside against Watkins. Diego Carlos leaving the field of play through injury. He was replaced by Leon Bailey, so uh, they now line up with Martinez in goal. Cash is a right-back. Concert and Pau Torres as the two central defenders. Dina at left-back, and then it's Bailey, Camera, Douglas Luiz, McGinn, Diaby and Watkins. But uh, Liverpool, very, very good in that, that first half. And looking to maintain this excellent home run. Unbeaten 13 at Anfield. As Salah down the line to Saboslai, running in behind Dinia, in front of the cop, away from Dinia with ease. He did well. Saboslai enters the penalty area, pulls it back. Diaz couldn't control it. Cleared out as far as Salah. And Salah tees himself up with a left-footed effort that was always on the rise and into the cop. Saboslai is going to be such a firm favourite here. Oh, he's had a great start to his Liverpool career and had a wonderful, what is it, 46 minutes of, of this game. Scored a goal early in the game, constantly making runs in behind and, and that's what he does here. Drips out into that right wing area that was vacated by Salah. Happy to do so as well. We've seen for years Jordan Henderson make runs out in, into this position where he doesn't have this skill. Saboslai does, dropping his shoulder, beating defenders, getting in the penalty area, picking out the right pass as well. Salah couldn't finish it. Diaby was adjudged to have been fouled by McAllister. Referee Simon Hooper gives that free kick. It's about six, eight yards forward of the centre circle in the Aston Villa half. The Aston Villa supporters who've made that journey up the uh, the M6 are in the, uh, the bottom tier away towards our left. They've got half of that Anfield Road end. That they uh, Liverpool are hopeful that the top tier that is currently redundant due to the redevelopment work, they've got the extra 7,000 seats that will eventually take the capacity up to 61,000. They're hoping that it will be up and running for uh, in, in October. But it's Liverpool who lead 2-0. We've got two and a half minutes into the second half. Conta with a free kick to Douglas Louise. Back towards Camera. Camera now plays it to Dinia, who sends over the left-footed cross and the header from Cash. Is pushed out well by Allison. Big corner kick. Allison did ever so well. Cash, good header, and Villa close to getting a goal back. Yeah, really good play by Aston Villa. Very simple in its build up, just moving the ball out left to Luca Dini. Whips a beautiful ball in right along that six yard line to the far post. Cash meets it on his own at the back post. Good header back across. And met very well by Allison. All the Villa players ran to the referee, hoping he'd look at his watch, but. Didn't go over the line. Great save by Allison. Good, strong wrist from uh, from Allison. Corner kick. It's swung over now from the right hand side. Watkins can't get there, and it goes out of play for uh, for a goal kick. Arsenal, Manchester United to come at 4:30. All the games over the weekend will be digested in the Monday Night Club with uh, with Mark Chapman at seven o'clock tomorrow. As Salah is released, Dina couldn't cut it out. Salah enters the penalty area. Salah with a cross. Nunez with a far post header wide. What a delightful ball from Salah, outside of the left boot, and Nunez just threw himself at it. It was a flying header, and he's smiling now, Nunez, and Liverpool almost had a third. Oh, everything about that was brilliant. Trent Alexander-Arnold from the corner of his own penalty area plays a pass over the top of Virginia to the corner of the Aston Villa penalty area. Salah onto it, as you say. His was outside of the foot. And then Nunes, he, I don't think he can do any more. He's stretching with his head, he's stretching with his foot, he's giving it everything he can to get on the end of it. 
and it just misses the far upright but brilliant play from Liverpool and again I feel like I say it quite a lot unlucky from Darwin Nunes and also again and I, I'm aware that we uh, the danger of repetition with Alexander Arnold but another truly sumptuous ball out from defence and I think a pass always looks better when it entices a defender into trying his best to get it and Dean tried everything he could to get on the end of that just couldn't he's at it again in that uh, hybrid role he was this time trying to pick out uh, Diaz are you surprised that Villa just don't leave somebody out on this left hand side because Alexander Arnold is vacating that role just leave them out there and then that switch of play when they do get it they've got a natural outlet yeah I mean that's one way of trying to take advantage of it but to do so you, you kind of have to be brave you kind of have to play have a player that we call in the cheating position which means they're not going to help you defensively they're just going to stand up and you know old school goal hang in that position but can you afford to do that against the Liverpool team that's so fluent and potent that you kind of need everybody back helping out but it's the gamble that if you're prepared to take may pay off and may actually demand that Trent actually plays in that position Aston Villa tried to get the ball through to uh, to Watkins that was cut out by Matip I know from many a conversation with uh, with Chris Waddle uh, in that excellent Marseille side they would just say to him you just stay out wide and we'll get the ball to you and uh, I remember Brighton coming here and Trossard played predominantly on the uh, on the left they scored a hat-trick that particular day for uh, for Brighton and he had a lot of joy taking advantage around the back of, uh, of Alexander Arnold but uh, Liverpool in control six minutes into the uh, to the second half BBC Radio 5 live and BBC Sounds uh, 10 past three on this Sunday afternoon Liverpool 2 Aston Villa nil so in about 20 minutes time we'll bring you the team news of Arsenal Manchester United which is our next commentary Cash Pau Torres in the shadows of the cop strides forward out of defence for Aston Villa left footed ball easily cut out by Diaz but runs it towards Diaby now finds McGinn centre circle of the Liverpool half Alexander Arnold though read it his forward ball Nunez the willing runner Martinez one bounce and it's into the arms and the Argentine keeper throws it out underarm towards Cash the Polish international camera gives it back to uh, to Cash so Villa have had a, a couple of opportunities where you're thinking they could or as you said should have scored and then all of a sudden it makes it a, a different complexion doesn't it once they get a goal back that's why Liverpool will want a third just to put this game out of Villa's reach as McGinn has to try and fight his way out of a tight spot surrounded by McAllister, Saboslai and, and Salah and he gets a free kick which is taken by, uh, by Cash to, uh, to Douglas Luiz, 2-0 I think in the first seven minutes of this second half, I think Aston Villa have shown more desire, more more fight than they did in, in the entirety of that first half. They're trying to play in Liverpool's half, that being braver in possession of the ball, trying to make things happen, especially get Diaby on the ball, continue to just play sloppy passes and under hit a couple. But it definitely looks like you know Emery's had a word or two with them at half time. An extraordinary day at Villa Park when uh, Watkins scored a hat-trick and Villa won 7-2. is Aston Villa's only success in 11 Premier League meetings. They're trailing here by two goals to nil. As again, Liverpool pressing high and putting pressure on Conza, who has to concede a throw-in, which again gets the applause from Jurgen Klopp, still looking very, very relaxed, all in black in the sunshine. His side with a a cushion here and Alexander Arnold looking forward Salah Salah to Curtis Jones who wins that 50-50 challenge and Salah almost got on the end of Cash who could have easily run into uh, trouble with the uh, the Egyptian international here's the boss lie just plays it inside to McAllister back towards Gomez Villa now putting Liverpool under a bit more pressure at times they were quite happy for Liverpool to have the ball at that stage of the field here is Alexander Arnold who is forward they've got two white shirts who are with him and he gets a corner kick as Dinia stumbles and falls to the floor and it rolls off his chest and behind and the appreciation for the Liverpool captain Trent Alexander-Arnold he's enjoying the role of captain today just trusts himself in possession of the ball 2v1 against him didn't panic knew he was out of position knew that Aston Villa were actually looking favourite to take the ball off him but just kept on going worked really hard and forced his team a corner looks like he's thriving 
as that role of captain. Robertson to take the corner kick in front of the cop near side the right. It'll be an in swinger, left footed. In it comes now. Nunez, Salah at the far post. Salah had to score. He loves playing against Aston Villa. And Mo Salah finds the back of the net. It's now seven goals in seven starts against Villa. And Mo Salah scores for the 150th different game for Liverpool. 3-0. Well, Salah finally on the score sheet. He knew it wouldn't take too long. Always scores against Aston Villa. And it was very simple in its in its play. Beautiful ball in from Robertson. In swinger. Front of the on the six-yard line, front post. Nunes just gets above everyone, just guides it towards that far post. And as all top strikers do, that position, that pomo, position of most opportunity at the back post. He's just there. And he just toe pokes it in. He doesn't even side foot it. Toe poke into the back of the goal. Emery will be fuming. Two set pieces conceded from his team for Liverpool. Oh, rightly 3-0 ahead. So 3-0 to Liverpool and an opening goal at Selhurst Park, Sahel Sahih. And 1-0 to Crystal Palace, they lead Wolves by Mitchell darting down the left-hand side after good work in midfield, a low ball towards the near post and Edward was the quickest to poke home from six yards away. Crystal Palace 1, Wolves 0. Liverpool are hungry, they're looking for more goals. Cut out by concert for Robertson's ball from that left-hand side and still that... That desire for the Liverpool players to boss like closing down Villa. There's no let up, it's unrelenting. And Juliet Farrington will be getting the aftermatch reaction for you on BBC Radio 5 Live that will bring you a little later on. She was talking to Jurgen Klopp and his press conference ahead of the game, and he was saying to her about we can make a good start into a very good start. This is going to be 10 points out of a possible 12 for Liverpool. Yeah, and I'd say that a draw away at Chelsea certainly not a bad result at all despite them developing at the moment. So, Liverpool will be pleased with the way they've started this season. Nunez, herring after the ball, left-hand side, he'll get there. Nunez tries to go it alone, the Anglis type pulls it back towards Salah and then just stepping forward, right side of the six-yard box was Conser to bring it out for Aston Villa. Long, long way back now for Villa. Yeah, just wanted to do a little bit too much there. Darwin Nunez, such as his confidence at the moment, but he's starting to look like the striker that they signed last season. He's leading the line very well, he's holding the ball up, he's physically up for the challenge at the moment, showing desire to get back and close down and defend as well. As you mentioned, this start to the season from Liverpool continued from how they finished the end of last season, which is always important. I want to keep the momentum going. At the moment, they look very strong. And what about that, that run for, for Mo Salah, scoring now in, in 150 different games for, uh, for Liverpool? Goal 188 in his Liverpool career. It's incredible. You know, he's up talking, being up there with the greats of, of Liverpool Football Club. He certainly had some greats. Now all the talk is, will they be able to keep him this season? Interest from the Saudi League and the money they're talking about. But Jurgen Klopp will not want to lose him from this Liverpool team. No. You, you sense that uh, the only way that that could happen now is that if Mo Salah makes things awkward and makes it clear that he wants to leave. And, I, you know, what Jurgen Klopp was saying ahead of the game, I don't think that necessarily is the case. And I don't think necessarily he'd want to taint his, his legacy here at, at Anfield. And you talk about him being amongst the greats. Uh, Ian Rush, Roger Hunt, Gordon Hodgson, Billy Little. They're the only four Liverpool players in the Liverpool's illustrious history ahead of him when it comes to scoring goals. He is a Liverpool legend. And he scored, as he always does, against Aston Villa. And they lead by three goals to nil. McGinn, back with, uh, with Pau Torres. We're approaching the hour mark here on BBC Radio 5 Live. Torres to, uh, to Douglas Luiz. With the exception of Conser, everybody's in the, uh, the Liverpool half. It's now out with uh, with Dean. He's put some good balls in from the left hand side. You think at least two of his crosses should really have brought about a goal. Douglas Luiz forward to Watkins making the run. Watkins doesn't keep the ball in play, and it goes out of for uh, for a goal kick. Mention about the Rugby Union World Cup that starts on Friday. France New Zealand is the opening game. All 48 games that are alive on Five Live Sports Extra, the BBC Sounds app, or the website. Wednesday night at eight o'clock on Five Live. 
all about Martin Johnson, who's in conversation with Mark Chapman as part of the uh, of the build-up. You won't miss any of the action through BBC Radio. As uh, we're going to have a, a triple change down below. We're going to have Gakpo, Harvey Elliott, and Jota coming on for uh, for Liverpool. Liverpool lead by three goals to nil. And very, very comfortable for Liverpool. It's with Curtis Jones on that, that far side. Now with, uh, with Gomez. Hardly missed Van Dijk, have they, with that suspension? No, they haven't. They? The defence hasn't really been tested. Oli Watkins hasn't been able to get involved in the game enough the only as I mentioned Bright Spark certainly in that first half was Diaby we haven't seen enough of him in, in this second half and Villa started the game sorry this second half better than they played in the first but them old habits came back into the game they started to get caught in possession they started to move further and further back into their own half deeper and deeper Liverpool's pressure has been excellent in this entire game forced Aston Villa backwards and then they concede another goal and all that brightness that Villa started this second half in just ebbed away. Do you think Stella, Salah stays on the field? Bearing in mind that he, he didn't react too happily by being removed as a substitute at Chelsea. You've got two forward players who are going to come on. Are you thinking that it's Diaz and, and Nunez to go off and keep Salah on? <laughs> well, I think we know what his reaction will be if he leaves the field of play, but as a manager, I think you probably do take him off at the moment. Dinia with the cross, Villa are going to be making a change as well, but Gomez gets there before uh, Watkins, Salah with a touch to Alexander-Arnold, keeps the ball in play to Nunez, if he can play it in towards Salah, he's in on goal, because Konza came across towards this near side, and there was a, a gaping hole in that Villa back line, McGinn does well to keep the ball in play for Villa, Salah working so hard, Douglas Louise gets away out of trouble, in fact gets to his feet, good refereeing from Simon Hooper's played the advantage, Douglas Louise out towards Bailey, Bailey running forward, Villa trail 3-0, Bailey, and a good scoring run of form himself with the cross. Begin with a header straight at Allison. And uh, Villa going to be making one alteration too. When they string their passes together and they're actually keeping their concentration levels high to make sure their passes go where they expect to. Aston Villa are creating chances. Just forced a little. And that first bit of pressure we've just seen. Oh, Matip losing concentration, trying to play a back pass and giving a corner kick away. So. Aston Villa, as soon as they step their tempo up in any way, they look like a good team. They've just not been at their level enough in this game. Zaniolo is going to be coming on. Nicola Zaniolo, the Italian who's on loan from, uh, from Galatasaray. Getting his final instructions. Villa then, from that mistake by Matip, have a corner kick, trailing 3-0. 62 minutes played, BBC Radio 5 Live, also available on BBC Sounds. Corner kick to Aston Villa swung over from that far side the right and the header from Pau Torres dropped straight towards Alisson Salah was away again there was a break on there Cash had gone with him still that triple substitution waits to be made instead it's out towards Robertson Robertson plays it early Nunez is ahead of him Nunez now on that left Robertson going through the middle on the inside here is Robertson with a cut back towards Salah just couldn't quite pick him out and uh, it bounces off the shins of Cash and it'll be brought away by, uh, by Dinia. They do want more goals, though. They're not going to just sit back on the three, one suspects. Yeah, the desire is still there. That attitude that runs through this Liverpool team to, to score more, to create more, to get more players on the score sheet still remains. And you know, they're counter-attacking from defending a set-piece. They had two opportunities to create... There, Mo Salah was in a foot race with Matty Cash at Allison seen, but he went a different avenue, still created a big chance. Ball played forward, Salah's onto it. Martinez is there, might have just strayed offside. Goal at Selhurst Park, Sahel. Wolves have equalised, Crystal Palace won, Wolves won from a free kick from the left-hand side, and a wang leapt the highest, eight yards away, and it drifted past Sam Johnston. Crystal Palace won, Wolves won. Triple change is about to be made. So let's get an update from the Formula One. Harry Benjamin. 
Well, less than 10 laps to go here in the Italian Grand Prix, and there is Jean overtakes left, right, and center off the starting from pole. Carlos Sainz of the Ferrari can't do it for the home fans. Max Verstappen has taken the lead and looks set to take his 10th consecutive Formula One race win. Let's get an update from Hart Motherwell, Kenny Crawford. 22 minutes gone, Ian. It's Hart's no, Motherwell now. Few chances for Motherwell. They had a flurry of corners. One of them landed on the head of Beavis Mugabe, the Ugandan international, big centre-back for Motherwell. It was goal-bound, but tipped over by Scotland international goalkeeper Xander Clark. As for Hearts, the host Alex Lowry, on loan from Rangers, had one tame shot over the bar, but still no no here between Hearts and Motherwell. And the answer is that Salah does stay on the field of play because Gakpo has replaced Nunez, Harvey Elliott has replaced Curtis Jones, and Diogo Jota has uh, replaced Diaz. And then now I think the substitute has been substituted because uh, we had a change earlier on through that injury to to Diego Carlos. Leon Bailey has, uh, has came on to replace him, but Zaniolo has come on to replace the earlier substitution for, uh, for Ashton Villa. So Nicola Zaniolo is on for just his second appearance. Liverpool still lead by three goals to nil. We're getting the, uh, the team news in a, in a short while, in about five minutes' time, I would suspect, from... Uh, the Emirates, Arsenal, Manchester United with our, our next commentary at, uh, at 4.30. Match of the day two tonight is at 10.30. You'll be able to see all the goals for yourself. But here Liverpool leading 3-0, 65 minutes played. As Douglas Louise. I suppose the only other thing from a Liverpool point of view, they're yet to keep a clean sheet this season. They'd, they'd want, from what the manager would describe as a perfect performance, a, a first clean sheet of the season and to go along with the three points. Yeah, they'll definitely want it. You know, everybody sets their stall by keeping a clean sheet. That's how you win games, especially when you've got a strike force and an attacking unit. The Liverpool haven't. You know, talking about those three changes, I suppose in a week where you're trying to keep Mo Salah as happy as possible, it's no surprise that he was the, the striker that was left on the field, but the three that went off all contributed to this 3-0 scoreline, especially Darwin Nunes, who looked as good as I've seen him in a Liverpool shirt today. Thought he played excellently. And from an Aston Villa point of view, nobody likes to be the sub that gets substituted, but I'm not sure Bailey did an awful lot today. Villa take a quick free kick. McGinn tried a diagonal ball along the ground for Diaby. Midway through the Liverpool half. That was cut out by Matip. Ball played forward by Robertson. Saboslai plays it back. Gomez to Alexander-Arnold. He now, his forward ball was to Elliot. That was cut out by Zaniolo. Uh, the ball by Camera, though, easily intercepted back by Alexander-Arnold, who floats the ball out towards Jota on that far side, the left, and Jota runs in field, Cash is back pedalling, 30 yards out from goal, Saboslai to Jota with his back to goal, Liverpool are attacking the cop end, leading by three goals to nil. Here is Gomez just outside the centre circle. Aston Villa have every white shirt back behind the ball. The two central defenders, Gomez and Matip, pass the ball towards each other. Now it goes forward towards uh, Jota. And still that high line from, uh, from Aston Villa as they try and squeeze the play as uh, Robertson goes back inside to, uh, to Gomez. Gakpo will be wanting to get on the score sheet. You think of Liverpool's forward players, he's the only one who's yet to find the uh, back of the net so far in this early part of the season. As Dinia with a challenge through the back of Salah gives away a free kick to Liverpool. That looks nasty on that from, from Luca Dean. Just... He was stretching for the ball. I don't know if he was trying to make sure he didn't lose it, shall we say, but it looked like he just went over the ball. I mean, Hooper saw it quickly, quick to blow the whistle. Good to see Mo Salah being able to get up. We talked earlier about he scored in a 150th different game for Liverpool. Very, very soon he'll be approaching his 150th game at Anfield. His record now is 148 here at this famous stadium and 102 goals. That's just at Anfield alone. Alexander-Arnold to take it. In it goes. Matip tried to brush it on into the path of Salah, who is making the run behind him. Out of play it goes for a goal kick. But Liverpool 3, Aston Villa 0 is the latest score here on BBC Radio 5 Live. And I'm making the statement, then I'll be surprised if it stays 3-0. I think Liverpool are still look like they want to go in search of more goals. You've just made a triple substitution. All three want to contribute with assists and goals themselves. they driving forward the, trying to make sure Liverpool keep on the front foot it's exactly what Jurgen Klopp wants throughout his squad he wants to be able to make changes and the quality of the play this side of showing doesn't drop at all 
The voice of Leon Osman with us here on BBC Radio 5 Live as Alexander-Arnold makes a surging run and he goes to shoot and he does so. The crowd wanted him, he obliged and right-footed, it just whistles over the top. That would have capped a superb display from the Liverpool captain but it is a goal kick. Let's get an update from the uh, the cricket. It's England against New Zealand in the men's T20 at Edgebaston. Adam Mountford. New Zealand's batters making hay in the Birmingham sunshine. 115 for two in the 14th. Finn Allen on 58. Phillips on 25. Devon Conway run out for nine. Seifert stumped off Livingston for 19. The men out. New Zealand 1-1-5 for two in the 14th. Commentary continues on Sports Extra. Here is Gakbo. Turns it in towards Salah. Salah steadies himself. Looks for the shooting opportunity still has the ball tight surrounded by white shirts wins a corner kick inside the penalty area 20 minutes to go he had an opportunity to get a shot away there Mo Salah wanted to beat that extra man and in doing so just gave Aston Villa the opportunity to get back in November it comes again from sloppy play from Aston Villa Pau Torres trying to play a pass into midfield giving the ball away and uh, Liverpool able to to make an attack because of it Alexander Arnold has actually gone down at the moment. He's just sat down midway through the uh, the Aston Villa half. The physio is on. So Boss lies on his haunches, just checking on uh, the England international. As Liverpool are going to be making a, a change. I mentioned that that England New Zealand in the T20 at Edgebaston is on Sports Extra. Then at six, there'll be commentary from the US Open live from New York. So the tennis coverage will be on Sports Extra from six. After we've brought you Arsenal Manchester United at 4:30. It'll be 606-0808-509-693. I'm sure Gareth Southgate will be hoping that uh, this is nothing serious for Alexander-Arnold, but he's going to be coming off. And he's not walking too freely either, is he? No, he doesn't look comfortable. And it came straight after an excellent bit of play that he just had, where he picked the ball up in a right-back position. He beat two or three men, ran through the centre of the pitch, ended up in a number... 10 position, probably 10 yards outside the penalty area, three ahead of him to pick up, Salah, Gakpo, Jota probably the only person in the in the team that they don't mind shooting from there turning down those opportunity, those options ahead of him, put it over the barber and doing so, found himself injured Robertson with a corner kick and comes off the head of uh, of Zaniolo, back into the penalty area it goes, Matip tees up Saboslai looks for the shooting opportunity and pulls it wide, just for the concern for Gareth Southgate, Alexander-Arnold has gone straight down the tunnel here at Anfield. Team news now from Arsenal, John Murray. Well, confirmation, Thomas Partey is absent for Arsenal, he's out injured. Zinchenko comes in for his first start of the season. Gabriel is back in the team for the first time in the league this season. So White moves across to right back, Kivio's on the bench. And with Nketiah in for Trossard, that's three changes for Arsenal. Just the one for United, Lindelof is in for the injured Varane at the back. But the new centre-forward, Rasmus Hoyland, is named as a substitute. That's the first time he's been involved and of the recent arrivals this week Amrabat is not involved yet Reguillon and Johnny Evans are on the bench so is Harry Maguire incidentally uh, as is the new substitute goalkeeper Altai Bayendia Matt Upson who is with John commentary from 4.30 Aston Villa have made a change Yuri Tielemans has, uh, has come on for Douglas Louise in fact it was a double change as well wasn't it because they've also made uh, Duran, who's come on to replace Ollie Watkins. Liverpool, meanwhile, are attacking. Elliot to Gakpo. Gakpo with a cutback on the left-hand side. Stopped by Tielemans. Cleared away by Aston Villa. And then McGinn looks for the early release to try and set the, uh, the young Colombian international away downfield. Kwanza, in, incidentally, came on to replace Trent Alexander-Arnold. So a home debut for Gerald Kwanza, the 20-year-old defender as we will now go to Tyne Castle and Kenny Crawford. And the visitors, Ian, have a lead. It's Hearts nil, Motherwell won. It was a brilliantly worked goal, finished off by former Southampton youngster Callum Slattery. His third goal of the season put through by Blair Spittle. Initially, the flag went up for offside, but VAR checked it and gave it. Brilliant goal for Motherwell. They lead Hearts 1-0 at Tyne Castle. An earlier Rangers nil, Celtic 1 is how it finished at Ibrox. If you missed any of the reaction, of course, it'll be available on the Five Live Football Daily Pod, whether it be from Ibrox, Anfield, the Emirates, or indeed Selhurst Park. And talking of pods, tomorrow the Daily was Salah into the penalty area for Liverpool. Salah shoots! Salah couldn't keep it down right-footed. Gakpo was, uh, was up with him. Tomorrow, daily content every day for the, uh, the Rugby Union podcast ahead of the World Cup that starts on Friday. In fact, the keeper must have got a touch for that. It's a corner kick. Yeah, again, just so easy for Liverpool to get in behind this high line of Aston Villa. The pace has been replaced 
the pace of Nunes and, and Diaz has just been replaced with Jota and Gagpo still have an ample opportunity to make those runs Salah again in behind and you're right keeper just touching his efforts over the bar another opportunity for Liverpool 16 minutes remain of normal time Liverpool lead Aston Villa by three goals to nil on BBC Radio 5 Live and BBC Sounds so boss lie to take the corner kick right footed it's an outswinger it's deep Matip with a header headed away by Conza drops to Elliot. Elliot shoots just wide got another touch on its way through Martinez at full stretch corner kick for Liverpool Elliot might have been caught after the shot. He's gone down, looks in pain just outside the D. Liverpool corner kick in front of the cop. He's now back on his feet. It's unfortunate there. As the ball looped up to him on the edge of the box. Same position, well, similar position to where Sapozlai scored the opening goal. Takes a touch, hits it quite well, and you're right, deflected wide from concert. Liverpool just pushing one way. There's only, it seems, one goal. The next goal is going to be scored into Aston Villa just not really taking part at the moment Liverpool are pushing and pushing so boss lie with this corner kick again from the right it's another outswinger it's over the head of Massip this time but it's going to be retrieved by Elliot left corner of the area back to Robertson outside the centre circle he hits the ball and tries to hoist it out to this right hand side Massip ducked underneath it and then he gives away a foul on, uh, on Tielemans as I notice some of the Aston Villa supporters now are just starting to drift towards the exits in that bottom tier in the uh, in the Anfield Road end haven't really had too much to cheer about although they you think Dini's cross won what was it seven minutes before half time that could have had an opportunity for uh, either Bailey or uh, or Watkins and then that cash header that was beaten out by Allison. and as it is it was the next goal was scored by Liverpool who lead 3-0 here is Durant shoots from the left corner of the area very ambitious effort from the young Colombian goal kick I say the best thing for the Master Villa fans today is they've been baked in sunshine. And a number of them will have needed to bring sun cream. I wouldn't say they've enjoyed themselves, but there is worse weather conditions to watch a game of football in. And if they didn't bring any sun cream, their faces will be like as red as the shirts of Liverpool. As Jota tries to get in Salah. He's playing on the shoulder of, uh, of Dinia. As Villa with camera he hits a diagonal ball towards Duran Duran takes it on into the penalty area and again he shoots early there was nobody up with him he scored within 60 seconds against Everton at, uh, at Villa Park the other week he's had a couple of efforts there that were off target it'll be a goal kick but there's been another goal at Selhurst Park Sahel Sahi yeah it's gone to the home side Ian Crystal Palace 2 Wolves 1 they cleared the ball away from a free kick, the Wolves defence. It was flighted back into the penalty area. And their man, Eberiche Eze, he's been called up once again for the England squad. He poked it home from eight yards away. Crystal Palace 2, Wolves 1. And those games will be live on BBC Radio 5 Live. Ukraine, it'll be played in, uh, in Poland. And then the, uh, the friendly against uh, Scotland at Hamden. Both games live on BBC Radio 5 Live. So lots of live sport to look forward to, whether it be the US Open Tennis, the Rugby Union World Cup that starts on Friday, and then the internationals as well, as the, uh, the Premier League will be taking a break after match day four. The squads of 25 players will have to be submitted after the transfer window closed on, uh, on Friday. And certainly business as usual is the message from Anfield regarding Mo Salah, despite that interest from Saudi Arabia. And with 12 minutes remaining, Liverpool leading 3-0. Klopp now, probably the first time he's been animated through the, uh, the whole game, just getting a little bit agitated, I think, with, uh, with Matip, making sure that he uh, maintains his levels of concentration in the closing stages of this game. 12 minutes remaining, 3-0 Liverpool. Yeah, well, they had to make that change with Trent Alexander. Arnold leaving the field, Quanza came on but he's gone centre-half, Gomez went into the right-back position just in between Gomez and Matip, that's where Duran's had that little bit of little bit of room to make those two runs inside the Liverpool penalty area in, of, uh, in the last five or ten minutes, he's had dreadful efforts at the end of it completely swiping with the left foot missing the target by an awful long way on both occasions but when you haven't had a clean sheet yet this season you don't want to give up opportunities and I think that's what Jurgen Klopp is saying. I'm sure, yes, you've altered your positions out there, but let's not lose our concentration. Let's come away from here with this clean sheet. Villa's uh, winning run coming to an end in a shuddering fashion. 
They had won their last four matches in all competitions with an aggregate score of 15 to 1. Of course, it was a convincing win against Hibs over the two legs, at two legs, 8 0 on aggregate in that uh, in that playoff game. They're then rewarded with uh, a group with AZ Altmar, Legia Warsaw, and Zrinski Mostar of, uh, of Bosnia for the, the Villa supporters back in European competition for the first time since 2010-11 as there is a result in the uh, the F1, Harry Benjamin. Yeah, well, it is Max Verstappen who crosses the line in the Italian Grand Prix to take his 10th consecutive Formula 1 win. He breaks all the records. Perez makes it a 1-2 for Red Bull and a fantastic battle between the two Ferraris. Ultimately going, Carlos signs his way to steal the final podium spot on home soil for Ferrari. Check and flag podcast, of course, for all the reaction from the uh, the team out there with the uh, the Italian Grand Prix. As here we are at uh, at Anfield with 10 minutes remaining of uh, of normal time, Liverpool leading 3-0, and ever since that's a boss like goal as early as the third minute, they've not really looked back, have they? No complete control of this game for from start to finish for Liverpool. Jurgen Klopp tactics have been excellent. His team have performed to a really high standard. I'm surprised that they've only got three goals on the on the score sheet. Just as we come into the, the latter stages of the game, the changes freshen things up initially, but for May have just lost their way in the last five minutes or so. They'll still be pleased, Jurgen Klopp. The main thing now I'll be looking for is to keep hold of this clean sheet. Seasons are successful or not by how many clean sheets you get so often. I want to make sure this is his first of the season. Yeah, he kept 14 clean sheets last season, did Allison. But as uh, Leon Osman quite rightly says, it'll be the first of this year's campaign as uh, camera. Villa supporters find their voices despite seeing their side trail by three goals to nil. Out to Dinia, playing from right to left. Nine minutes remaining of normal time. Here is uh, his camera forward to Tielemans under pressure from Saboslai. The two number eights coming together. Up to his feet, though, Tielemans towards Abu Diaby. Runs into trouble as Matip steps out of defence. And then the ball goes back towards Alisson who was terrific against Newcastle United and you think about the, the context of this game probably only been tested the once wasn't he with that cash header can't recall too many other times yeah it? and the, the quality of goalkeeper that he is I still think it's a, a save I'd expect him to make that's what, what all goal, good goalkeepers do they might not be in the game an awful lot but then when they're called upon they show exactly what they can do, and that's what Allison is good at. His distribution is good. His concentration levels are excellent. Here is Sabos Light. Very, very gentle pace in the game now. And that gives you an indication of how comfortable it is, really, for uh, for Liverpool. Again, there's no pressure on that back line from, uh, from Aston Villa. Despite Unai Emery with his uh, jet black hair, slick back as it always is, patrolling that technical area. Marching to the left, back to the right, standing still momentarily as Kwanzaa comes forward out of defence, out towards Jota. Elliot makes a run towards him, and then as the ball is played into the inside left channel of the penalty area, Elliot didn't make the run, but Gakpo did. And they thought they'd actually got a corner kick, but referee Simon Hooper has said it's a goal kick instead, as, uh, as Kwanzaa had to deal with it. So it'll be a goal kick to, uh, to Aston Villa. Yeah, it's misunderstanding on the attack from Liverpool, but should have been... A corner kick, just really poor play from Cons and the referee let him out of jail. We've had three goals here at Anfield. They had had three goals at Selhurst Park, but they've just seen another. But who too? Sahel side. Yeah, we've had a fourth now, but a third to Crystal Palace. In Crystal Palace three, Wolves one. The best of the lot. Nice combination play between Edward and Mateta on the edge of Wolves' penalty area. A nice one-two. Fell back to Edward, and he just tucked it past Jose Sarr for his third. Premier League goal of the season Crystal Palace in command all three points they lead Wolves by three goals to one so Palace are in command and Liverpool are in control at Anfield with under seven minutes remaining Cash back to Conser Gakpo will run towards him Martinez all in green to Pau Torres almost caught in possession by Salah just had a little nibble of it releases it towards Camera. Camera passes it now to Dina on this near side plays it inside Challenge comes in from McAllister. Loose ball picked up now by Dinia driving forward. Looks for uh, Duran through the middle. He releases Diaby. Diaby with the cross. And nobody made the run into the penalty area. What was it, four or five yards out in front of goal? 
from that left side. Yeah, good move from Aston Villa. No, no surprise to see Diaby, the man at the heart of it, and he can't do any more. He gets inside that penalty area, faces up his defender, flashes it across. I say the six-yard line, but it's probably about four yards out from goal. But both McGinn and Duran had come for the cutback. Duran could only make the cutback, haven't been involved in the build. McGinn had to go to the back post for any kind of tap, and he didn't. And that was probably as good as a chance as Villa have had. Ball over the top, Salah again was after it, just too far ahead of him. Jurgen Klopp's 300th Premier League game today is going to end with a very comfortable win. A good record that he's got against Aston Villa as well. This will be a ninth success from 12 meetings against Aston Villa. The only defeat being that shock 7-2 defeat at Villa Park as the Liverpool supporters create the noise inside Anfield with five minutes remaining of normal time. Turning it back to a fortress once more, aren't they? They are. That's where Liverpool have always had their success by making this a very, very difficult place to come. And they did so for the majority of last season as well, I think. Liverpool lost nine games last season, but only one of them was at Anfield and it was a surprise one to Leeds United. They started in the same vein this season they want to make their home form outstanding only had one defeat in the last 43 in the Premier League so it's a fantastic record yeah they've won 32 and drawn 10 during that run as uh, Wataru Endo the Japanese international is going to be coming on for his third appearance since joining from Stuttgart for £19 million getting his final instructions from, uh, from Jurgen Klopp just wonder if maybe now he would take off Mo Salah now so Mo Salah can feel the love from inside Anfield. <laughs> maybe. I think Mo Salah will still be upset about that considering <laughs> there are minutes left he could score another goal in. I'm surprised that it's took this long to bring Endo on. The game's been so comfortable. Liverpool in such control of this game. Maybe I thought he'd come on oh, 20 minutes earlier just to allow him that opportunity to get in the middle of the park and spread passes. It was a baptism of fire away against Newcastle last week. Thought he might get more minutes this week. McAllister is the player who makes way and Wataru Endo will be coming on for a, another change in the closing stages of this game here on BBC Radio 5 Live. It's just gone a quarter to four. Crystal Palace 3, Wolves 1 is the latest score at Selhurst Park. Motherwell are leading at heart. Celtic earlier won away at Rangers in the old firm by a goal to nil. We've got commentary coming up in about 45 minutes' time. Arsenal-Manchester United for the third commentary of the day on BBC Radio 5 Live. If you want cricket, that's on Sports Extra. That'll be followed by the tennis at six. And because, indeed, of the, uh, the Rugby Union World Cup, I'd imagine tonight 6.06 might be the last for a long time because of the live rugby. Certainly next Saturday, we'll have England-Argentina from uh, Marseille, live from seven. Here is uh, Salah to Saboslai. Saboslai with the cross, strikes the body of, uh, of Dinia, and it goes out of play, off the corner flag for a corner kick to Liverpool, who've never let up throughout the whole game, have they? No, well, they haven't. The pressure is what you always look at a team. When the game is obviously won and it's getting into the latter stages, is your team still closing down? Is your, st is your team still on the front foot? Are they showing the desire you want throughout your team? And that certainly is the case for, for Jurgen Klopp's men. The crowd certainly enjoying that. Luca Dina tried to clear the ball, it hit the corner flag, and he had a swing and a miss in front of the cop there. So Boss Lai with a corner near side the right, right footed off the head of, uh, of Gomez. Kept alive, far side by Jota. Plays it back. Endo with the cross. Matip makes the run, saved by the legs of Martinez. Flags up. It'll be a free kick to uh, to Aston Villa. Two minutes remaining. That's the gamble Aston Villa take. They, they play a high line, whether they're defending a ball that's on the halfway line or a delivery in from wide areas. They try and stay as advanced as possible. When it works, it looks great. You catch people offside, as Matip was there. But when it doesn't work, you're giving the opposition such easy opportunities like we've seen Liverpool create today. Well, very soon we'll be finding out how much uh, additional time there will be. And in fact, I'm expecting four minutes of, uh, of additional time in the, uh, for the board to go up in the next 60 seconds or so from the, uh, from the fourth official, Tony Harrington. 
on average in these early stages. I know there was a, a lot of complaints about the... Uh, we thought we might be getting to World Cup levels with the additional time, but it's uh, on average it's increased by only about three minutes in these opening three or four games as uh, Cash running forward far side the right. Plays it back, camera right on the centre circle on the halfway line. That uh, Villa away end is now probably only about half full. There are a lot of empty red seats in that part of the Anfield Road end as uh, Liverpool deserved victory here today. Half-time at Tynecastle, Kenny Crawford. Hearts nil, Motherwell won, a well-deserved lead for the Steelmen at the break. Callum Slattery, his third goal of the season on 29 minutes, a lovely slotted finish, low pass Xander Clark after it was initially disallowed for offside, but then VAR gave it. Hearts nil, Motherwell won, half-time. Thanks, Kenny. If we're unable to bring you any live reaction from Anfield before our next commentary of uh, Arsenal Manchester United at 4.30, it'll be available at half-time in that game or you can listen to it on the Five Live Football Daily pod. Here is Zaniolo, the substitute for Aston Villa. They're 3-0 down. Zaniolo, the Italian, inside to Duran, scoops the ball forward, headed away by Matip. Clearance by Gomez, now playing as right-back, strikes Duran and the two of them just get a little bit of a tussle. Gomez reacts a little bit angrily. And they go eyeball to eyeball, head to head. And then Simon Hooper gets in the middle and just says, settle it down. And it'll be a free kick to, uh, to Liverpool. And we are now into that stoppage time of the, uh, of the four minutes that are added on. Yeah, tempers surprisingly high there, considering there's absolutely nothing in this game at the moment. But she shows that players still have the pride. But it's been a good day for Liverpool. Exactly what Jurgen Klopp would have wanted to see his team look threatening score goals be in control of the game from Aston Villa it's, it's a game that I probably wasn't expected to, to really get anything out of and they've had three away games so far at the start of this season Aston Villa only one at home looks like they're going to have a two wins two loss ratio I think he'll be quite pleased with six points at this stage and through in the Europa Conference League I think you'll be brushing yourself down and moving on after this from Aston Villa yeah, but for Liverpool, they'll remain unbeaten. They'll be joining Tottenham and West Ham on ten points, just two points behind the leaders, Manchester City. As Jota cuts inside towards Gakpo, concert turns his body, gets in front there of, uh, of Gakpo, turns and plays it back to Martinez, who can clear the Aston Villa goalkeeper. Robertson heads the ball forward. The only potential block on Liverpool for otherwise what has been a perfect afternoon They'll just hope that nothing serious regarding Trent Alexander-Arnold, the fact that he had to leave the field of play. Yeah, and the manner in which he left the field as well. He just seemed to decide he needed to sit down, didn't really move any, any further than that. Laboured off the field in a very slow walk and straight down the tunnel. So, you're right, that is a concern. Good thing is, from a Liverpool point of view, is international break. Elliot with the cross, Gakpo's outstretched right boot caught by Martinez. Yeah, that, that international break, he'll probably see him drop out of the England squad and it just gives him a little bit more time to, to get over any injury he may have yeah we'll find out over the course of the next 24 hours I'm sure before the England players meet up at St George's Park for those games against Ukraine and Scotland that we'll be bringing you live on BBC Radio 5 Live here is Endo for Liverpool uh, Elliot out towards Robertson Still now the levels haven't dropped from Liverpool, leading by three goals to nil. Jota, Robertson going on ahead of him into the penalty area. Jota waits, delays the pass to, uh, to Elliot, back then to Endo. And uh, now with, uh, with Elliot trotting forward was Jota. And he's surely in an offside position. Yes, he is. There is the flag on this near side. And so by my watch, we're about to enter the last 60 seconds. So what would your closing thoughts be? of this uh, Liverpool 3-0 performance, Leon Osman? Oh, comfortable. I think that they started really well. All the damage was done in the first 15 minutes. That They really showed their difference in quality in and out of possession in this game against Aston Villa. And that's what they could do here at Anfield. They can take the game away from you very, very quickly. Aston Villa were well below the standards I was expecting from them. And they were punished accordingly. Here is Salah to Jota inside the penalty area, just moves outside the box, a challenge comes in, Camera gets it away to Zaniolo, plays it inside to Diaby who stumbles, but behind him was McGinn who keeps it going for Villa and Zaniolo's continued that run, left corner of the penalty area now, enters the box, looks for the cross, Durana didn't make the run. And there was the young substitute, Gerald Quonset, to clear for Liverpool, out of play, it goes for, uh, for a throw. So with... Uh, 
seconds remaining here at, at Anfield. And Liverpool are going to now go 15 unbeaten in the Premier League. They'll be 14 unbeaten at Anfield. It'll be one defeat in their last 44 in the Premier League at home. And Jurgen Klopp, who talked about three points, making it a very good start, is exactly that, and in a comfortable fashion as well. And they never look back after the Savoslai sweet strike after three minutes. The cash own goal added to it midway through the second half. Nunes with a chip hit the crossbar. Salah eventually did add a third goal. Villa had a couple of opportunities. But this has been a comprehensive Liverpool performance, Leon Osman. Yeah, exactly how they'd want to go into the international break. Jurgen Klopp sent his team out on the front foot to create opportunities, knowing Aston Villa had a high line. Trent Alexander-Arnold was at the heart of every passing move that Liverpool mustered. Brilliant running from the front three at times, from the midfield, from deep in behind Aston Villa at times, but always picked out from Trent Alexander-Arnold. And they deservedly took a 2-0 lead. May have been more at half-time. Didn't see enough from Aston Villa. Thought they laboured through the game at times and... I think they'll put this down as a block after what has been a, a, an OK start to the season. But this was all about Liverpool today. Could they continue this positive feeling around the club, the momentum that they've got, the run that they've got here at Anfield? And they did all that and more. Well, it certainly is a, a positive start to the season for Liverpool. They keep their first clean sheet of the season as well. As for Aston Villa, Steve, I just noticed a little bit of a disagreement between Watkins and Bailey, who'd been substituted, and they've both gone off down the tunnel. Looked like Watkins was a little bit perplexed at whatever Leon Bailey was saying to him, to, saying to him but Villa were never really in this, and this was a very good win for Liverpool. It's finished at Anfield, Liverpool 3, Aston Villa 0. We've had a late goal and the full-time whistle at Selhurst, Sahel Sahi. Yeah, late goal went to Wolves, but too late here, Steve. It's ended Crystal Palace 3, Wolves 2. So Crystal Palace with the points. They took the lead in the second half. Mitchell, he whipped in a cross from the left. Edward sharper and quicker than the Wolves' defence. He made it 1-0. Then Hwang came off the bench for Wolves to equalise, direct from a free kick. Crystal Palace, they responded first through their inspiration, Eberi Cheese, and then the best goal of the day, a cute one-two involving Mateta and Edward, who wrapped up the win. The late goal from Cunha didn't spoil matters. It's been a good day for Crystal Palace. They've beaten Wolves, Steve, by three goals to two. It's been a great day for Liverpool as Jurgen Klopp waves and blows kisses to the Liverpool fans inside Anfield. Leon Osman, the words you kept using in commentary was control. And I'm not sure Liverpool had that for large parts of last season, but this was routine, wasn't it? Yeah, and that's what they'll want for the majority of the games here at Anfield. They want it to feel like it's routine, mm. that the opposition are turning up just to get beaten and just to get out of here as quickly as possible. And that's the way it's Aston Villa seen today. It looked like they were just trying to keep the score down right from the start. And that was down to themselves, start and sloppy, but it was definitely down to the impressive start that Liverpool made, especially... Trent Alexander-Arnold, as Deno said during the commentary, slightly concerning when he had to leave the field, that their attack and potency dropped a little bit, such was his performance today, but apart from that, it was an impressive afternoon for Liverpool. Klopp's having the time of his life, Ian. Yeah, he's whipping up the crowd in front of the cop, very, very happy, and uh, Harvey Elliott, and if you're on Salah watch as well, Salah just went down the tunnel. Me message is quite, quite clear here at Anfield. Business as usual, move on. What about Villa? I, I think, Leon, if I was an Aston Villa fan, with all the talk in the summer about how, you know, they can compete at a much higher level and all this, but, well, they were hammered at Newcastle and they were nowhere near this one either. They're going to be very disappointed. Yeah, I mean, I think if you'd have said to Unai Emery at the start of the season, you'll have three away games out of the four, a trip to Newcastle, a trip to Anfield and... You know, a trip to Burnley, you'll come away with two wins, you'll get progression in the in the Europa Conference League going into first international break. You'd have probably said, OK, I, I can take that. But they didn't compete at all today. That That's the disappointing thing. I expected to see the progression they may have made, to see how far they've come. Could they give Liverpool as good as they got today? Apart from flashes from Diaby, who did show an awful lot of quality, I thought that Aston Villa as a whole just looked like they were ready to be beat today and certainly didn't show what we've all been led to believe is the progression they're on. Uh, Leon, Ian, thank you very much indeed. Routine for Liverpool, 3-0 winners over Aston Villa. It's also finished Crystal Palace 3, Wolves 2. We'll bring you uh, live reaction from Anfield as and when we can. Might end up being at half-time.